Welcome in everyone to Nordmark. We are in the Dwarven Mines and we are on a terrible rickety uh, cargo lift descending 500 feet into the darkness. Um, unfortunately, on, there are many visitors. Yeah? You're giving a recap right now. That's not your job. Yeah, I'm giving a recap because I don't want any of you to have inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It's in my wow. best interest if wow. I can <laughs> just kill you. Um, I mean, sure, sure. Does, does someone want to give a recap and get some inspiration? Go for it. No. For God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it. <sighs> okay, go for it. Okay, so good news is we found the mine. The bad news is there were bugs in it. The good news mm. is we ran away from the bugs. The bad news is they're sort of, you know, patrolling around the mine, might show up at any time, especially if we stay in two, one place too long or make a noise. Oh, and it went off scouting and um, died by falling downstairs, except they didn't technically die because they just went straight to hell, where they're now working as a uh, white collar worker doing constant paperwork. Yep. Uh, and it's and full of parsnips. Parsnips. Yep. We conclu <laughs> yeah, we concluded that it's full of parsnips because, long story short, uh, Invernal is basically Welsh. <laughs> That's a little sad because she couldn't open the door and she didn't have her friend with her to help not open the door. <laughs> so we moved on to a cargo lift and now um, bugs are all coming out of the walls and the lift's falling to pieces. Yep, yep. So all there's already... Well. To explain what you're seeing on the map... Uh, here are our party members, Tattle, Stonk, Aegis, in their free dogs, Bob, Vintage, and Luna. Uh, and these are all enemies. <laughs> this is a big hole in the floor with a 500 foot drop. And this little red area here is, uh, it's planks that they are creaking, they're cracking. They're going to collapse at the end of this initiative round. Speaking of which, then, top of the round. Aegis, you're surrounded by bugs. What are you going to do? Literally surrounded by bugs. I am swinging my maul. Oh, there we go. We cleaving. Yeah, well, hopefully. All right. Plus five on the strike. Let's do this. And that's a 12. A 12. Okay, so that's not going to oh, hit no, any of AC them, I'm afraid. Is, oh, damn it. They, they are covered in these uh, chitinous plates the AC of armor. Was. Yeah, the AC is, is quite high. Did I tell you what it was? I think I have, we, right? We did work it out, but okay, I can't so the, it was so long ago. The AC is 16. That's what you got to beat. 16. Um, obviously, if you beat that AC um, with a two-handed weapon, you can cleave through them because they are just minions. Um, but yeah, 16 is what you got to beat. 
All right. Well, anything else, Aegis? Um. So what can I do? Uh, I think I can use. No, my bonus actions don't work on this. Uh. No. No, I'm all done. All done. Okay, we go to Young Crufix A and B. Uh, so A, we have one, two, three, four, five. Okay, okay. So uh, let's see. A is all in good positions right now, except this one's going to come in here. Um, we're going to have one against Aegis, two against Tattle, one against Bob, and one against a one in. Okay. So mm -hmm. against Aegis, uh, that's a 16 to hit. Does not hit. Okay, the two against Tattle. Uh, 21 and 22 to hit. Yeah, those hit. Okay, the one against Bob. 17 to hit. Yep, that hits. And the one against a one in. 16 to hit. Nope. Okay, so the two that hit Tattle, that's 10 points of damage. The one that hits Bob, that's five points of damage. Mm-hmm. And then over to okay. group B coming in to surround a one-in. And uh, they're all going to go for a one-in. Yeah, that, that makes sense. All right. So that one's not going to hit. That's a 12. Uh, oh. Those two are better, though. A 21 and a 24 to hit. Uh, yeah, they, those might hit, yeah. Okay, so there's teeth are coming in, and they finally uh, they 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 get past your your carapace, your natural armor. Take ten points of damage for that. Um, this is all piercing damage, by the way. In case anyone you know reduces that, I know Aegis obviously reduces a bit of incoming damage. Okay, over to Stonk. Oh gosh! Oh gosh! Um, Stonk is having a time trying to figure out. What he can do to, <laughs> to <laughs> unfuck the situation. Ah, um, so young C are at the bottom of initiative. That's yeah. good. Good. Um, I kind of feel like I have to get rid of the, the young C right above Tattle um, to create an escape route from where I think the bottom of the elevator is going to give way that makes sense yeah, yeah. at the end of this initiative round i guess yep um, so yeah definitely have to do something about that guy and this oh um oh what's the best thing oh, good. there's always the sword yeah and there's always the sword for sure um and your bard, as a Valor bard, is sort of half a fighter, so you are actually shockingly good at weapons <laughs> as a bard. Yeah, the thing is, if I go to move towards that young C, um That's the downside. With melee, then I get... Well, the two young Cs, Stonk is next to... Uh, 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 opportunity attacks, goes right. Yeah. Only 10 um, points of damage. <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh, I'd rather not have Sunk take that. Then it's getting <laughs> quite perilous. That's fair. Um, you could focus on those two young Cs and leave the other young C to tattle and vintage. Between the two of them, they should be able to take that one out, right? Uh, just yeah. getting Bob out there becomes tr trickier, but... <laughs> yeah, then... Bob doesn't have a chance to move away from that area anymore. Um, uh, sorry, did not have prepared what I was going to do. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> we'll throw a thunder wave. But thunder wave has a 15 foot cube. Mm -hmm. If I throw it at the young seas below stunk, below for looking from the top like this. Yep. And Aegis can get. Uh, mm. You'd glance Tattle and you'd get Aegis as well, but you would also get, yeah, a shitload of the young Krothix beneath you. God fighting in these very close quarters is problematic. Uh, 
Do we remember how much HP these minions have? Not many. Oh. I don't think you know. But if you deal damage to them from them failing a saving throw or from an attack roll uh, that hits, it kills them automatically. Hmm. It's just if they pass the save, you've got to deal enough damage to kill them. I'm thinking about sleep. Sleep could work. Yeah. Um, sleep could also hit fellow party members, so... It does yeah, start with the lowest say... number. And then counts up, I was, so uh, more likely actually, to be okay. uh, May I ask a question in that respect, then? Mm -hmm. uh, Tassel's um, high uniform is currently on one hit point. Would that count as yes. the purpose of uh, sleep? Yes, it would. Okay. Yeah, yeah the sleep spell is going to knock Tassel out, and she'll and she'll fall next turn. Yeah, no. that, that's a bad idea. Unless, well. How big is the range on that again? Oh, 90 feet, yeah. <laughs> That's not a good idea. <laughs> it's creatures well, within 20 feet of a point you choose within 90 feet. Oh. Um, so it doesn't have to be next to you or around you. You can um, position it that, slightly differently. Um, but even if I put them to sleep, they're still in the way for tattle. To yeah, they away. become difficult terrain when they're asleep because you're just stepping over them. Oh, okay. Difficult terrain. That's not too bad, actually. Actually, that's that's. I think that's a reasonable plan then. Like, try to get that. That sounds group great to me. A and young C below Tettle and Aegis. Put those to sleep. Yeah, like if you aim on like this wall, then that's all within twenty feet, roughly. Uh... So it'll, I mean, Aegis has got more health, so Aegis will be fine. Um, yeah. And the other, it'll take the others out. And that's six. Yeah. Four young C's and two young A's. Depending on, on how much you roll with the 5d8s, it could be less than six, but it probably well, won't be I, six plus Aegis. So that sounds good, I think. I can upcast it to do to do 7d8. Yeah. Which I think is reasonable in this situation. Go for it then. Um, roll me... Roll me 78 yeah. if you want. I kind of think that's the best plan. So... I, I think it sounds great. <laughs> okay. Uh, this, this is what sleep is made for. I fully I fully agree with you. I think this is the best best use of sleep. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, can I okay, uh, select seven here in Albert? 78. Way. 24 hit points. Okay. So for that, you're going to get two of them. Uh, Unfortunately, nine. they have nine hit points each. Uh, so three of them would be 27. So uh, please pick two. I'll let you pick two. Normally I pick which two fall asleep, but I'll let you pick two that you want to fall asleep. There's two young A's. There's two I'm young A's. Tell. Okay. So yeah. I'm going to give them a little ring for Sleepy. God damn it. Shouldn't have upgraded. Hey, that's gonna that's gonna help people get out. Like Bob can now get out that way, you know, things like that. Um any movement mm. or bonus action? Um for Stonk. I think Stonk, yeah um, he's still got those young seeds behind him below him. Um I think he shouldn't be moving. And Fair. don't have any bonus actions because he's out of Bardic and and immediately think of it. Bonus okay. action. We go over so. to Bob. Yeah. Um, Bob, if he wants to move out there south by uh, going over Young A, then he gets Young A. Then he gets attack of opportunities from the Young A's to the right of. That's right. Yeah. So. I actually think Bob should attack that young A below a woman first. Yeah, give it a go. And then if you, no, you know, take him out, that's one less attack of opportunity coming your way. It's a good idea. Yeah, uh, so Bob's gonna try to have a bite. And that is a d20 roll. Ooh, <laughs> natural one. Ooh. Unfortunate. Really wow. unfortunate. 
So Bob's just uh. not able to get past that carapace. I mean, Bob can still move. Um, yeah. You know. Bob doesn't have inspiration. Stronger than Um. Yeah. He has nine hit points. He's gonna get two attacks of opportunity against him. What kind of um, dog is Bob? Is Bob a green. fighter or a? He's a fighter. I Has mean, he, got he the... can. He does yeah. have the second wind bonus action. Yeah. Yeah, that could that could be very helpful here. <laughs> yeah, I think he's already gonna use that now because he's already down 10, 10 HP. Um, yeah. So that's one d ten plus his level, which is. His level's which... the same as yours, so four. Four. So one d ten. Oh, hey, Max. <laughs> I could actually wait, it's maybe... <laughs> well, so, no, I mean, two attacks two. of opportunity coming in as soon as you move, that could be down to zero, yeah. and then you can't... Yeah, the risk is there. I mean, they got yeah. to both hit, but at least this okay, way you, you know yeah. you're through. So, um, yeah. So, yeah, you, you Bob moves around the other side, so that's going to be two attacks of opportunity um, from the two young Crufix. So I'll roll them now. <laughs> Uh, so 121, 119. Those both hit my Take dog. 10 damage. Good thing you, you do that second wind. <laughs> you are rolling incredibly right now. and I'm doing going... all right, yeah. <laughs> You're doing more than all. They do have plus five to hit. So, you know, they've got a, they've got a good chance to hit people. But yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm going to move Bob to the southeast and he's going to take... Well, not like I can move him here. Yep, you can what? move him there. He's going to take mm -hmm. one more attack of opportunity. Um, from from that guy. Okay. Yeah, from that guy because you're leaving oh. his reach uh, from there. Yeah. Um, Natural one. Yeah. <laughs> no damage. God. Okay. Bob's okay. Um, but if I move him. Further away, then he's also going to get a opportunity attack from the young A above him. Yeah, you couldn't move him there without him taking an attack of opportunity because he's still mm. within reach of this young A. And the yeah. other one's obviously asleep, so can't do anything. Yeah. Mm. Do kind of want to get him more out of uh, Yeah. Move him over here. Um, that's going to have to be. It, I think. Hey. Oh, oh, oh. All right. He has the defender thing. Fuck, I forgot about yep. that. Uh, I should have used that earlier. For when he settled or when it was. Or when oh, it was well. it might, be usable, might be usable soon. We do go directly over to Tattle. Righty. Well, I had a plan, but um, it's changed a little because um, now I've got those two down there are asleep. Mm -hmm. Now, my main goal here is I need to get the heck off here. Yeah. Yeah, before the the planks collapse under you, they're groaning and creaking under your feet. Okay, question first. Can I fit through here without squeezing? Uh, you would be squeezing. Okay, that means if I move through there, um, any attack's going to be at advantage. Yes, that's right. And I've got this one here and this one here. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is, uh, I've got a choice. I can either spend my action to disengage and just move out. Yep. All right. Or I could uh, take a chance and see if I can um, attack young A, use my rampage abilities to attack young C, and be clear to just walk out having um, eliminated two targets. That's perfectly valid. It's a game of risk. How risky are you feeling? Okay, let me just crunch a couple of numbers. I am currently a giant hyena. You are. My attack bonus then is... Oops, scrolled the wrong way. A plus five to hit. They have fairly high AC, so I need to roll above average. Yep. I have inspiration, but I'll only work for one. Just don't miss, lol. I always miss. In fact, I get quite angry when people don't. <laughs> uh, is it worth it? The answer is yes. It's always worth it. Oh yeah, there I'm we good. go. I'm attacking young A. 
you know, this is a stream game, I need to show off. Here, there's a 23 hit. Oh, it does. So which one were you, which one were you attacking on that one? Uh, young A. Young A is dead. Your teeth go straight through. Yep, and using my Rampage ability, I'm immediately going to spin around and attack Young C. Okay. The odds are a bit better now because I've got in still got that inspiration to spend. Mm. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Does a 23 hit again? Yep. That one's dead. Also, I also I tell a lie. Um, that last one was a 21. I did the math. I rolled a 17 and did the math wrong in my head. Still hits. Okay. They're AC 16, so. <laughs> oh, fair enough. Then. Well. I mean, if uh, they did have an AC above 20, I'd be thinking this was suddenly Pathfinder. <laughs> Anyways, uh, now that no one's there to attack me, I'm just going to squeeze. <laughs> yep, you squeeze through there. And you're you're out of there. Very nice. And I just tilt my head at Young C there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's Luna straight afterwards. Yep. And... So Luna would have to be here to flank, is that correct? Uh, no, because you'd be in a melee. Okay. Oh, yeah. Can't really flank Young C, but... Can still eat. Nom, 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 nom. True. I'm going to have Luna come down here and go for a bite. Yes. So that... Ooh. My dice likes me today. I rolled a 19 plus Luna's attack bonus. That is uh, a 22. 22 hits. Young C is dead. I don't know why I waited for the attack bonus, to be honest. There is C 16. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Yep. Uh, Tassel uh, growls at Luna approvingly. Nice. I love it. Over to a one in and vintage. Uh, a one in. You're surrounded. Vintage is on some creaking floorboards and is looking a little scared. What do? Yep. Um. Well, a one in's going to cast Zephyr Strike. Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, Where's there? Boop. And. Um, but it isn't going to move yet. It's going to do a whacking with the uh, with the, the trading of fish command. Okay. On starting with the young bee up here. They are not fish. I feel like I need to mention. I know. But I mean, it's still a trident. Yeah. It still works. <laughs> it, do they have a swim speed though? No. Damn. I mean, technically nothing's a fish. That's true. Well, everything is. I think everything's a fish. Oh. All right. Uh, plus three. Okay. That's good. N Unnatural 20 is very nice. So mm. they have an AC of 16 and you are using yes. a two-handed weapon, which means I the sure cleaving was. rules are coming in. Um, I'm just gonna go, Yep, so that's the 16 one, then that's 18, and then Eep. that's 20 for a third one. So you take three out Eep. with somehow a swing with a trident. Uh, takes three yeah. minions out. Very, very, very nice. Yeah, and then uh, that was great. The, the fish push <laughs> me. What was they it? do, don't they? They do if I want them to. Um, So I go... Five feet. You know what? I'm going to go this way. Five feet that way. And then I now have a movement speed of something stupid. Okay. I was going to say, are you sure you want to go into that square? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, because now I get to move. And now I have uh, a movement speed of 60. Um, <laughs> you're going to do a lap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to... Yeah, you know what? I'm just going to jump over this way. I think. That's really cool. And of course, because of Zephyr Strike, there's no attacks of opportunity. Exactly. Very nice. Very good. Uh, over to Vintage. Vintage is going to... 
disengage and run over here. Okay. <laughs> I remembered. <laughs> I'm, no, I'm proud of you. Proud of you. Uh, very good. Very and, good. And and it's going to um do the the second wind. Second wind. Again. Okay, that's a good shout. That's a good shout. Cheers. Do, do, do. Uh, one d ten. Very that's nice. That one. Eh. Not bad. Eleven. 11. Oh, yeah. Two. Right. The young seas are basically all attacking ages. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it on, beasties. One of them's going for stonk. Actually, one's going for stonk. All of the others are going for ages. Um, in fact, the one then going for it's stonk vintage is vintage. One of the dog like can, can do protect. Ah, uh, yeah. So we'll start with the one against Stonk. So if you want to do a protect, let me know now because yes, changes how I roll. You're doing a protect on Stonk. So Vintage is jumping in the way of of the bug. So bug's roll is a disadvantage. Mm, that's good even at disadvantage. 16 and a 17. So that's a 21 to hit, I'm afraid, Stonk. Um, so that's five points of damage. Um, the other four are going for Aegis. Yeah, that's 17 just, to beat Nick. That's just bad luck. Thank you. Because otherwise this is going to take a while. Right. <laughs> Number one. I rolled a 17, so that's a hit. Take five points of damage. Number two is a 15. That's a miss. Number three is an eight. That's a miss. Number four is an eight. That's a miss. Okay, so one hit. Take five points of damage. I take two points of damage. You take two points of damage because you are a, a heavy armor um, master. Yes. Very nice. We go to the top of the round. This hole... Is now fully a an actual hole. Oh, classic make move. Yep. Uh, yeah. And I like that you're just renovating this lift, just a space for you to live in. Another area it starts to crumble. Feel like these holes are following us around. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Also, checking my notes at the same time. Oh dear. No, no, not at the same time. It happens later. Never mind. You're good. You're good. Oh God. <laughs> Aegis, over to you. Okay. Right. Um. Target rich environment. Yeah, I am. I'm going for the. I'm going for the cleave again with them all. Yes. Come on, this time. Yes. All right. Give me a natural twenty. Okay, that is not going to hit. So I'm going to use my inspiration. Okay. I'm, I'm going to switch dice because my chunk is not working again. And that's worse. Fuck. Ah. Damn shame. Damn okay. shame. I assume you've action surged already. Yeah, I have. Um, okay. This is this is too dangerous a position to be in. Um, Seems fine to me. Oh, what can I do? <laughs> right. Um... You're, you're, I don't even have anyone useful I can... You're in a no okay situation at the moment because the young C's aren't having a turn again for a while. The young A's there are asleep. The ground is about to fall underneath me in the in this round, yeah. so I have to move. Yeah, that is indeed the problem. Uh, and, uh, if you've got a bonus action, you could overrun. That's not a thing we use in this game. Yeah, oh, okay. Never mind. Yeah, I, was, I was thinking, is that... No, it's not. Um... Uh, no, you can't do bait and switch because there's only a one in swap with, and that puts me still on the spot. So, yeah, but then you could, oh no, because then you still got Young C. But you could then move with only one attack of opportunity against you. I, I could, I think I'll just move here. And I'll take okay. three attacks of opportunity. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yep. Um, you're going to take three attacks of opportunity, so 17 to hit. None yet. And the last one, no, none of them hit. So they all lunge at you with the claws and the mouth and they, they can't get past your armor. They can't get past your armor. You you are fine. Batting them away with the end of the mall. I couldn't yeah. hit you, but I can save myself. Yeah, really nicely done, Aegis. Really good work. Um, yeah. Uh, anything else? Nope. Okay, we go to Young Crufix A. Now, only two of them are awake. One is next to Bob. The other is going to come around over here to Luna. So one against Bob, one oh. against Luna. The one against Bob 
is a 14 to hit. The one against Luna is a 19 to hit. No, a 20 to hit. Sorry. That hits. Luna takes five points of damage. And Bob is also hits. And five points of damage for Bob. Uh, the young bees. Where are the young bees? Have we got any left? Are they all dead? They're dead. dead. They're dead. Let me get rid of the young bee token. There we go. Lovely. Okay, so it's over to Stonk. Do we have any idea how long we are still stuck on this elevator? Uh, your estimate at the moment, based on like the, the time it's taken and the sort of the trundling of the chains around you, it's probably descended about 100 feet. Um, you have a vague idea that it's 500 feet in total. Oh, God. So we're only a fifth of the way down. Why did we get on this elevator? <laughs> well, you saw what happened when someone went the other way. <laughs> mm. uh, there's well, no, no fire, so there's no reason to take the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, the thing is, Stone could put more of the sleep, but that's only active for a minute. But a minute is like 10 rounds. Yeah, mm -hmm. but we've spent how many rounds so far in combat? Five rounds? Something like that? Yeah, but if, uh, This is your fourth round. Nice. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Well, I guess it would be valuable, but still they would wake up before we got down all the way. If you attack something that's asleep, you have advantage, and if you hit, it's an automatic critical hit. Mm. Not that that matters against minions, but, you know, you have advantage to hit Wait. them when they're asleep. Nick, question. Mm-hmm. Would that automatic uh, critical count for um, attacking ones around them? Uh, no. <laughs> oh. That would be very cheeky. Uh, it's not something I've written <laughs> raw into the cleave rules, but no, that doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> but the advantage roll does. Uh, I would say the advantage roll does. I'm fine with that. It's just the automatic critical's a bit much. <laughs> Because you still want to tactically do something to set up that situation. Hmm. So I could, I could put, well, I could try putting these four young C's. Yep. At the bottom to sleep again. My last roll. Okay. Sleep Seventy-eight was below average, so maybe this time it works better. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Oh, yeah. I mean, taking two of them out is already good. Like the action economy is now. Vastly more in your favor than at the start of this yeah. session. It's definitely yeah. better, which is why I'm considering it. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I don't immediately have a better plan for Stonk. Um, let me see if I guess it as a two. Uh, the other spells are mm, mirror images. It's nice. To, it's, yeah, I think sleep upcast probably the best. Okay. Okay. Let's uh, roll 78 again. All right, let's get some big numbers this time. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Yeah, come on. That's bigger. Well, that's better. That is three of them. Yeah. Um, uh, so choose your free. So all but the young C, that's the most in the corner. Okay. The bottom. So nice. this one's now asleep. One is now asleep. Yeah, that one next to us, I couldn't target. Yeah, uh, that one you'd be targeting Aegis in a one yeah. at the same time. Would have put a nice at risk as well. Um, oh, no, sorry. That one there is not asleep. That was one too many. Yeah. But I think this already seems like a better situation. But yeah, I mean, already, look at that. That's great. That's absolutely fantastic. Um, wonderful play, uh, Stonk. I'm assuming no movement or bonus action because you've got a young uh, Krufik right there. Yeah, I think it's probably better to stay in this location. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. okay, it'll be Bob's. Yeah. Um, Bob is down to 4 HP and he's isolated from the rest with two awake young Griffiths or whatever they're called. Yeah. Oh, he's only, got, he's only got one there. Well, 
one right next to him, but then there's one near Luna that could move over to him. And True. there's also one still yeah. left that could move over. He's just down to 4 HP and he's he's uh, not doing great, let's say. Um, so I guess he's going to have a bite at the young A here. Uh, right. Honestly, it didn't matter last time because it was just a one item. Uh, so, rolling. Well, that's a Ouch. 12. <laughs> yeah, that's not going to hit, I'm afraid. Bad luck, Bob. Bad luck. No, it's it's not bad luck. Bob is just really shit. Um, <laughs> he's got Bob's a good boy. Don't say that. I mean, you never know. You never know. The young Crawford might miss Bob. Um, okay, we're going to go to Tattle then. Mm -hmm. Tattle, okay, you're kind of pinned so in the corner. Luna's in a bit of trouble. Bob's in a bit of trouble. But uh, Stonk has got pretty much all of the high, um, the Crawfords to the south uh, handled. Okay, so question what I need to squeeze to get through this space. Uh, no, I'm fine with you getting through that space without squeezing. Okay, so my movement is, uh, I have no idea where the mo my movement speed on the, oh, well, there we go, 50 feet. I mean, I knew that, but for some reason I didn't know that. So I'm going to move five, ten. Do I need to squeeze to get through here? Yes, it's a space smaller than you. Any space smaller okay. than you, you need to squeeze. 20, 30, 35, 40. Damn it. Can I make it? What's your strength score? You could try jumping it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, my strength as a giant hyena is... Uh, plus three. Uh, so that means you can jump 16 feet. Okay. So I think so, it's literally yeah. your raw strength score, not your modifier. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that's uh, 10 foot, so I can just hop over it. Yep. I think it's Is technically halved action? if you don't have a run-up, but no, it's not an action. It's part of your movement. Um, but I'm going to just allow it because you're a hyena and jumping is kind of a thing that they're good at. Hey. The rules are assuming you're a human. Boing. <laughs> or a humanoid, yeah. anyway. Yeah, just corrected in time. Ah, <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> I'm on it this time. I'll keep laughing. Okay, so do I have advantage from here? You do, you do. Okay, my insectoid friend. That is a 22 to hit. That hits. Absolutely. Delicious. I just, I'm just, I just sort of, uh, as I hop over, jump over, I turn around and just charge straight at it and knock it straight into the pit. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Yep. Um, if you ever want um, to do that, by the way, there is the shove action. Like, you lot can be ooh. doing that. <laughs> oh, yeah. I suppose um, if uh, you've got a better athletic score um, than attack bonus, it's worth it in this case. Yeah. But, yep. Uh, yep, per my rampage ability, I shall travel south and I'm going to bite a young A. I can move half my speed, so that's. Five. No, that would that would get give me an attack of opportunity. Oh, this is confusing when I'm big. <laughs> yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty. No, not quite. Yeah, I'll just move south. Okay. I'm going to bite young A. Okay, that is an eighteen. 18 hits, so you take down the other, saving Bob's life, quite quite possibly. Very good. Uh, we go to Luna then. Okay. Uh, Luna is very low on health. I think she has 40 feet of movement speed. So I think she's just going to get behind Tassel. That sounds good. That sounds good. A one in. Hello. I'm the one that's going to jump in here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and start swinging. I'm trying it around uh, at this one. Okay, so you'll attack with advantage. Yes. Attention, what's me? 
What again? Plus three. Those aren't great. I'm gonna use inspiration. Wow. The same roll twice there. Oh, nice. Oh, I'll take a 20. Yeah. Uh, 20's, 20's better. Um, so that's going to take out this one. Uh, then it's going to take out this one. And then it's going to take out this one. Yay. It's going to jump like that. So there's only one awake Krufik left. Um, and Vintage is right next to him. But, I, I mean, you might want to move. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm going to move over. <laughs> yeah, good idea. <laughs> uh, okay, over to Vintage. And uh, yeah, Vintage is gonna. Why not? Vintage is gonna have a, a chomp. Yes. She has plus three. Okie dokie. That's exactly hey. what you need. Excellent. Well done. Woohoo! So Vintage's yeah. jaws chomp down on that young Krufik. The only ones left are asleep. So let me tell you what's going to happen next because quite easily, obviously, um, you can finish those off and I'll let you do that. That's absolutely fine. Um, you're also sorry everyone listening at home. Turns out I wasn't rooting the music out, um, which I might not have been doing for Guild of Icons either, so that's interesting. Uh, so anyway, yeah, the other young Krufiks, you can finish those off. That's fine. That doesn't take any, any more time. However, the walls are still shuddering. The sound is still uh, thundering through. You have one round, okay? So you may each do... One action, one movement, one bonus action. You don't have to do it in order. Just do it now before the next thing comes through. No. <laughs> hey, I'd like to bonus action, drop wild shape, uh, move action, turn into a giant spider. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not move action, action, action. Action, action, turn into a, oh, a, a giant spider. That's a great idea. Um, okay, that sounds good. Uh, what's everyone else doing? Jumping on Tattle. Okay. That's fair. <laughs> I'd like to, um, yeah, everyone hop aboard. Operation <laughs> Budget Rider is a go. <laughs> web, web us up to you. <laughs> yeah. Make little web sacks. I'm going to say one person can mount Tattle because that's how the mounting rules work, okay? And a giant spider is large enough for one person because it's a large beast. One person can ride on Tattle's back, um, but not more than one person because of how the rules work. Up to In you that who that case, is. I just will, um, I just will like, get on, like, try and grab onto one of the chains that is, like, holding the main kind of weight of the of the, of the lift um, to be fair I think um, Tass would have Luna hop on her back okay. can the dog do that yeah you can have a you can have a dog on the back that's fine yeah yeah. I could, I'll just uh, make a little web pouch so she can easily stay there yep that's fine you've got a little doggy papoose <laughs> Uh, a one in is got to go fast. And uh, anyone else, you, you can take a little bit of time to drink potions. You have one action. Use it wisely. Uh, some could fly. <laughs> Not sure if that's a good idea. I mean, yeah, I mean, if Stonk can fly, that's a that's a cool little, little move. Oh, yeah, from your, yeah, from your, your instrument of the bards, the Dos Loop, yeah. 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 Um, I mean, the floor is collapsing under you, so that might actually be a really good idea. That lasts for ten minutes. Um. Hmm. Yeah. I, I guess Sonk is gonna play the dust loot and the and go in the air. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You, you just yeah. So how does that how does that look? How does that look when Stonk casts fly? What, what what does that sort of manifest as for Stonk? What's the Stonk way? Um, I think Stonk is just kind of just playing his his loot in a power stance as he suddenly yeah. just starts floating in the air and just <laughs> excellent. <laughs> kind of, 
you know, in a musician power stance as he just takes to the skies. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> Is there anything else before I bring in your next challenge? Uh, well, Bob, Bob doesn't have a plan yet and he's... I don't know what to do with Bob. He's in trouble. Can, can Stomp carry Bob whilst flying? I, I was actually thinking that earlier, and then I forgot about it. Yeah, you can try okay. and hold a dog. That's easy enough. <laughs> okay, but Stomp is going to pick up Bob. I mean, you won't be able to use your hands for anything else, obviously, but you can hold the dog, and the dog can then make an attack. You can just float nearby and have the dog try and bite. Uh, <laughs> use the dog as a weapon. Improvised weapon. <laughs> Improvised weapon. <laughs> Improvised weapon, yeah, just swing the dog by by, by Bob's tail. Um, okay. Right. Well, in that case, bursting through the walls, we have... Oh, no. You've seen the babies. Here come the adults. <laughs> oh, I know. I was worried that it was going to be the, the lift falling down. Oh my god! So these are not minions. They are more formidable. They are the adult version of what you've seen before. Um, and let me get their initiatives. Oh, they rolled awful on initiative. You're probably just going to delete them before they come out. Look, they all rolled that nine, eight, and six on initiative. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to alter that to be the other way around so that A goes first because it's easier on my brain. Nine, eight, and six. Like that. There we go. Okay, top of the round. Aegis. Uh, just one other thing. There you go. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Why would it appear on the stonk? Stonk's flying. Stonk's flying. Stonk's flying. Stonk's fine. Vintage, less so. Uh, but yeah, Aegis, over to you. All right. Um, okay. Aegis. What is Aegis gonna do? Um, perish. <laughs> no, don't be silly. <laughs> Aegis doesn't perish. He just um, goes to hell. Um, I think he is going to switch back to the shield. Probably should have done that in the uh, preparation moment we had there. Um, I'll let you have done that because you didn't do anything else during your prep moment. Okay, so right. you can you cool. can have done that. That's fine. I'm back on shield. Shield and hand axe are back in, um, and I suppose he will. Um, yeah, it was, is this is this a gap? It's a uh, yes, but it's small. Um, it was just the limits of my mapping software. Okay, cool, cool. Um, so he'll, he'll move into that and. Um, Go to strike with a menacing attack. <laughs> yes. I think with menacing attack, you don't have to decide to use it oh, until yeah, afterwards, right? Yeah, true. Yeah, so I will so, see if I attack first. Yeah, yeah, All see right. if you hit first. I'm assuming these are bigger, they're easier to hit, so they'll have a lower AC, right? That's a great assumption to make. I like that. I like <laughs> no. that optimism. Oh, uh, not here. It's a four on the dice, so it's a mm, nine total. No, no, that's not here, I'm afraid. Um... Ooh. Uh, is there anything scary. else I can do? Uh, no. <laughs> okay, over to Stonk. Stonk, you're up in the air. Your hands are full of Bob. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like the hairiest um, cloud right now. Yeah. Actually, um, even when we're holding Bob, Stonk can still throw insults. Yeah. Oh, totally. <laughs> so I think uh, that Stonk is gonna gonna do that. To throw some vicious mockery. Okay. Uh, That's a uh, save, isn't it? Um, I believe so, but let me double quickly. And it is a wisdom saving throw indeed. Okay, let me roll a wisdom save. I got a 10. Yeah, that's not that's not enough for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Which one are you targeting? Uh I mean it gives disadvantage on on attack rolls, so maybe well I think Adult Day is probably the best one to target Adult, since eh? okay. stage it. Roll um, your damage. Yeah, so that's a D4. That's four. <laughs> Very nice. And 
Disadvantage on next. And disadvantage. Okay. Um, I'll let you all track that and remind me, hopefully. <laughs> I mean, someone put down like a post-it note next to it if they want. But Yeah. Um, and then it's going to be Bob. I'm assuming Bob's not doing much at the moment. <laughs> yeah. Just, just Bob is kind of shivering and, and kind of being scared still because Aww. he's pretty close to death. So he's he just snuggling up. Yeah. Poor baby. Be... All right. Yeah. Tattle. Spider Tattle. Spider Tattle. Spider Tattle. <laughs> Druidic magic. Spider Tattle. Okay, I think ta Spider Tassel is going to try and web up Adult C. Okay. Uh, does okay. your web involve a save or is it like the web spell? Is the question. Uh, it's basically an attack and um, if oh, it hits nice. on a hit, the target is restrained by webbing as an action. So, um, yeah, the target's basically restrained and they have to spend an action to try and free themselves. Excellent. But it does have to hit. Yeah, it does have to hit. And yep, yeah, that's got a range of 30 feet, which I believe is quite easy. Yeah, yeah, you're well within 30 feet. Natural 20. <laughs> Shame this doesn't do any damage. Natural 20, okay. So this is a restrained Krothic. I'm going to give it a little brown ring. Raising Nick. Uh, and yeah, that one's restrained. It's a great idea. I'm gutted that I got a natural 20 on an attack with no damage, though. Hey! Better than missing. Better than missing, because I'm not going to lie. These people, they got a good AC. <laughs> okay. Oh, um, and I'm just going to fly. How? Okay, so are the walls of this uh, lift uh, part of the lift, or are they the shaft it's traveling down? They're part of the lift, um, and they it goes up about, mm, I'm going to say 10 feet. Okay. Lifts are not known for them vaulted ceilings. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, in that case, I'm going to do a classic Bree move and get on the ceiling. Yes, get on that ceiling. Uh, I will mark you down as having an altitude of 10 feet. An and altitude sort of, huddling. of rogue. Yeah. yeah. And Luna's move is she's just basically just hanging on, you know, she's just sort of sat on tassels underside. Yeah. Oh, I assume Luna's not doing anything this turn as well? Yeah, she's staying put. Yeah, that's fair. A one in, over to you. Hmm, we don't have to, um, to cleave anymore. Nope. No cleaving needed. Only kill. Hmm. Hmm. Yes. Gonna stand here. And, um, take a, a shot from my fishing rod bow. The adult bee. Okay. Check my sheet. Nice. 20 plus 8. Plus 8. There we go. Oh, natural 20. <laughs> okay, that's a critical hit. Uh, so double your damage dice. Um, and yeah, it absolutely um, hits. B is about to have um, an unfortunate moment. <laughs> <laughs> and um, as, as I fire my swarm of fish, spins around me and then goes up the arrow and fires along with it. <laughs> so we are doing... So plus 26. Okay. 2d6 2d8 plus... What was that? Plus 4. Oh gosh. That's a good bit of damage. That is a good bit of damage. <laughs> do, 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 do. 17. 17 damage. Very, very nice against Adult B. Very good. Very, very good. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Um. Yeah. Yeah, that's 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 a one in turn, I think. Okay. Over to Vintage. And Vintage is going to... Mm, you know what? I'm just gonna run down near Aegis. Nice idea, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, we yeah, get an adult A. 
who is going to move in a bit closer and is going to strike at Aegis, has disadvantage on the attack roll um, because of Stonk's uh, insults, which somehow work, even though <laughs> it doesn't speak um, common. It's just that it's because it's laced with magic. It's magic. It doesn't need. Uh, doesn't need. It doesn't need to understand you. Uh, I'm it's so going... fed up with the bugs in this mine. <laughs> I'm sick and tired of these motherfucking bugs in this motherfucking mine. That is, however, a natural five. It's not going to hit you. Uh, it has multi attack though, so it's going to do it again. Uh, and I need to just double check. Yeah, it's not got disadvantage on this one. Vintage Protect. Why is there an ad break in Probe? Yeah, Vintage Protect. Vintage is doing a Protect. I'm just opening my dashboard to see why on earth that's going on, because I've turned off the ads. <laughs> so, not sure what's happening there. For God's sake, it's turned itself back on again. There we go. Well, turn that off. It's all going to be very interesting on the YouTube pod. Um, okay, Disadvantage. Oh, that's a good idea because I just rolled a natural 20 and a 15. Uh, so that is a 20 unnatural to hit. Oh, that hits. Just okay, but, you know, better than... Yeah, yeah. Better than what it could have been. Uh, so that is going to be... Oh, four points of piercing damage. It stabs you with this blade... Uh, that is on its um, on its shoulder. It goes straight into you, slams into you. Four points, did you say? So yeah, four just, points just of, one. of piercing damage. Yes, just one point of piercing damage. This thing's weaker than its babies. We go to Adult B, which is <laughs> going to get up on the wall and climb ten feet up onto the ceiling, and it is then going... <laughs> Am I that much of a dick? Do I target oh, Stonk? I'm doing the same you. Because <sighs> if I, you uh, see, if I hit Stonk spot, yeah. and cause a concentration save, concentrate if if fail concentration, Stonk's no longer flying, falls to the ground, and the next turn dies. I'm not that much of a dick. I don't. I think they're operating a bit more instinctive than that. They're not that intelligent creatures. They're going for a one in who has already attacked them. So. It leans it's over and fires a spike from its carapace straight at you, a one in. Oh no. And oh, that's not great though. That's only a 12 to hit. So it's going to nope. try another one. Uh that's better. That's 24 to hit. Yeah, that that probably hits, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you take 7 points of piercing damage. Ooh. Studded with a a spike and that yeah, that one's climbing up. Adult C is going to try and break all this webbing. Uh, because, damn, that's annoying. It's a strength check, I believe. Yeah, it's a DC strength check to okay. burst it, or it can also attack it. I should have attacked it. Oh, well, I rolled a natural two, so it doesn't matter. Um, okay. Uh, that's its go. It can't do anything else. And we go to the top of the round. This area of the ground falls away. I was very scared for a second before I remembered Stonk was flying. <laughs> yeah. I should have started moved Stonk away already. Just and and another area starts to rumble beneath um, Aegis and Vintage and the adult A. Okay, Aegis, you'll go. Floor's rumbling under you. All right. Um, if Aegis moves here, mm -hmm. does that give us flanking? Uh, yes. Yes, it does. Excellent. I will do that then and go in for another hand axe hit. Lovely. It's an 8 on the first one. And uh, a 19 on the second one, so that's a 24 to hit. That hits. Roll some damage. Oh, yeah. Damage. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the best part. Okay. Uh, I am using a menacing attack on this. Um, okay. So that is a um, 5 on the regular damage. Plus a D8, which is a six on the D8. So that's 11 damage total. 11 damage is very nice. And a DC 13, uh, is it wisdom? Uh, yeah, I think it's wisdom. Okay, let me give it a go. Yep. DC 13. 
I've rolled exactly a 13, I'm afraid. Ah, oh, you bastard. I'm, I'm sorry. I, tr I, I tried to fail it, but I, I just I just can't roll low. Well, you try harder next time, Nick. <laughs> I just will come and tell you off. No, Frida, Frida will come and tell Frida you will, off. Yeah, that's the scary She's one. much yeah. more scary, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, over to Stonk. Okay, Stonk, so you're flying over a hole. <laughs> yeah. Stonk is going to kind of stop flying over the hole. <laughs> yeah. Uh, on. Now Bob's under him. Um, <laughs> uh, I guess he moves over there for right now. I mean, in my mind, he was already kind of just floating around, but yeah, hadn't yeah, yeah. moved him around before. Um, I'm trying to think if he can do anything besides just throwing another insult. Uh, oh, it's not a bad shout, honestly. I mean, it, it works pretty well, and that disadvantage is... Mm, yeah. That's good. Indeed. Uh, yeah. yeah. Just floating Looking around, out. starting yeah. shit. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll make a uh, wisdom save. Well, it does have a potion of fire breath. You could take the potion of fire breath. The um, Adelbeus already, you said it's it went up to the ceiling or something like yeah, that? Yeah, it's 10 feet up in the air. And you're it's probably ten feet up in the air as well. That's pro you're probably same height. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. He he has a fly um, movement uh, up to six feet, I believe. Wasn't taking off such details. Um, could he drink the potion holding while holding Bob? I'll allow that. I think that's fine. Um, is that a good way? Is it? Sounds fun to me. Yeah, uh, yeah, sure. Why not? Let's let's just do it. Uh, Stung's gonna okay. Chug the of fire breath while you, flying. You chug the potion of fire breath, uh, which is an orange liquid that flickers and smoke fills the top of the container. Um, and as a bonus action, you can exhale fire at a target within thirty feet of you. Um, so choose your target. Yeah, Stunk is going to <laughs> launch fire breath at Adult B. Adult B, okay. I, I need to do a dexterity save. Uh, what's their dex like? Not the best. I've rolled a seven. <laughs> yeah, it's 13 according to the potion of fire breath description. Yep, okay. So, so roll 4d6 fire damage. Yeah. <laughs> and you get, you get to make that attack two more times after this. Very nice. Well, that's nine, a shit. Nine points of fire damage. Well, yeah, not bad. Uh, that's, not, that's not too bad. No, not too bad at all. Uh, that is now a bloodied uh, adult Krithic. Ooh, very nice. Yeah. Yeah, and that's uh, going to be stonks. Great turn, turn, to be honest. Yeah. Decent amount of damage. Very decent. You can do that two more times. Uh, Bob, <laughs> I assume, is still had like shaking and shivering yeah. Bob, Bob, Bob is simultaneously scared at what's happening but he's also kind of just getting toasty and enjoying the war <laughs> yeah uh, Tattle over to you you're you're up on the ceiling um, you got some targets oh and roll to see yep. if your uh, web recharges oh yeah of course d6 okay that's a free so no not this time but well Anyway, I believe you've all seen this nature documentary. Ew. Five, a ten, a fifteen, a skitter, skitter, skitter. <laughs> yep. and, I'm, and now that my prey is webbed up, I believe yep. that gives me advantage. Uh, yes, it's restrained, so you have advantage on all attacks on it. Hey. Nom 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 nom. <laughs> uh, do, 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 do. Okay, that's a plus five. So that is a 19 to hit. A 19 does hit, yeah. Okay, so let's see. Let me roll my first d8. Yep, so first off, that is uh, seven points of piercing damage. Ooh. And I'll also need a DC 11 constitution saving throw, please. Okay, con save. 
Uh, that. Oh, that's a natural two, so no. <laughs> yep. And um, let me just roll a 2d8. Oh, you've got a venomous bite, have you? Yep. Nice. Ooh, that's a nice roll. Uh, 13 points of poison damage. Wow, okay. Uh, yeah, that's a bloodied uh, Griffig adult down over in the corner there. <laughs> From full health to bloodied in one hit. Yeah. Ten yeah, that's two. great. Okay. And... Yep, that's my go. I've got a question. Would Luna be able to attack from this position? Probably not. Uh, I, I would say you okay. need some training for Luna to be able to, to attack from a swaddled, webbed up position uh, in, in on, like your undercarriage. Um, uh, thorax, can... is it? No, spiders don't have those. I can't remember what it's called. Yeah. And she still, still take the uh, help action. Faint. Yeah, go on then. <laughs> okay. I think that's fine. Actually, I might... Well, I already have advantage, but you know. Yeah, I mean, the role play of it, isn't it? Yeah, it's true. She's balking. Yeah. <laughs> Menacingly. Uh, yeah, that's Luna's go. I think as a Mastiff, it's less of a bork and more of a boof. They're very large yeah, dogs. Uh, like. <laughs> she's, uh... They weigh like 140 pounds, something like that. Uh, we did agree that her breed is specifically uh, oh, that's what the right. point uh, yeah whatever the uh, this universe's version of a German shepherd is we agreed there was a it was a something shepherd that's right that's right a peristerian shepherd so it's probably closer yeah. to about 60 pounds maybe 40 yeah. they're fairly lightweight but still large um, mm -hmm. okay yep uh, sorry I said that's my go so that's a one in oh sorry I missed that over to a one in Excellent. Um, oh, and in a pretty good spot. Yeah. So Two massive cavernous drops on either side. Yeah. <laughs> One but the, shove the action away. Like, <laughs> but don't they have to be like here to shove me here? Uh, that is true, actually, they do. <laughs> they could stand there yeah. or there. I mean, true, but they're not there, so... <laughs> yeah, yet. you're fine. I mean, well, yeah, what's the worst that could happen? <laughs> yeah. How can their so, movements be? Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be fun. <laughs> I've just looked at it. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. So, uh... Longbow time. D20. Class 8. 27. <laughs> yeah, that hits. <laughs> that is that is not a level four character roll right there. A 27 <laughs> is not a level four character roll. <laughs> what happens with the high decks and the archery fighting style. Yeah, they're great. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> um, <laughs> I need to put my character sheet where I can see it. Okay, there we go. So we do A, D, A, plus A, D6, plus 4. Okay. Need to practice using this dice roller. 10 damage. 10 damage, nice. Damage. And that's against Adult B again, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Adult B collapses to the ground, skittering in its little legs will curl over like they do. <laughs> 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 Nicely done. Nicely done. Adult B is dead. Uh, anything vintage for is Vintage? To, uh, yeah, Vintage is going to tiptoe around the hole, come over beside Aegis again, and yep. go for a chomp. Okay. Maybe attack first, because then it will have flanking. Oh, uh, yeah, good point. Let's do yeah, that. you can do that. Um, I'm sure Aegis points that out to Vintage. <laughs> it's like bite, bite, then move. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a critical. <laughs> that is a critical because for vintage. Gr vintage crits on a nineteen. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, roll, roll double the damage dice for vintage. That's yeah. Three D six plus two. They just will hold out a treat. 
Oof, that's fine. Uh -huh. That's unfortunate. Um, but so, I mean, still five damage. Uh, but yeah. Then, Good and boy. now, Good boy. adult A is bloodied as well. Excellent. Excellent. There we go. Uh, it is now adult A's go. Um, adult A is going to do one attack on Vintage and one attack on Aegis. So first Aegis will one... protect Vintage. Aegis is protecting and Vintage. Vintage. Will protect Aegis. <laughs> Vintage is protecting <laughs> Aegis. So they're both interfering on each attack, like keeping an eye out for the opening. Okay, so both are going to be at disadvantage. Uh, so first one's against Vintage. Uh, at disadvantage, that's an eight. Second one is against Aegis. Nope. At disadvantage, that's a natural one. Boom. Just batting it down. <laughs> they, simply can't, and, they simply can't be stopped. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we get an adult C who is going to try and break the webbing. Uh, this time with an attack roll. Um, okay, that's a natural 20. So that web is broken. Um, it does take... Um, it, it does have 10 HP if uh, that matters. It won't matter on a natural 20. Like... Oh, sorry, five HP. My bad. Oh yeah, no, I f I physically can't um, roll less than five on a natural twenty. Uh, so, yep, it is. It is free, and it is going to use its second bite on Tattle. Fair. Uh, that's not great, actually. <laughs> that's a thirteen to hit. Ooh, just short. Just short. No luck. Oh, the adults are not having a good time of it. Um, and I've Especially just noticed not adult, a. adult A is about to have a really bad time of it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I didn't even see it. Oh, I played myself. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Um, like, yeah. <laughs> wow, that's just spiteful. That is just spiteful, <laughs> isn't it? Uh, <laughs> and soon enough, the uh, yeah. lift is literally just going to snap in half. It is, it's getting close, isn't it? All right, Aegis, over to you. There's only one Krufik left up in the top right corner. Um. Okay, I I think uh, it would be difficult to train to it and get past Vintage, right? Yeah, that's right. Um, How high is your strength score? You could try jumping. Oh, uh, that's true. Um, yeah, I've uh, got 16 strength, so... Uh, yep, you can you can make that just about. Technically speaking, your jump distance is 8 feet because you haven't got to run up, but I'm, I'm going to allow it in this case. I'd, uh, probably it's jumping to here would be 8 feet, 8 right? feet and 10 feet, it's basically... It's close enough, right? And then how much could I move after I jump? That'll cost you 10 feet of your movement, so it'll be okay. whatever your movement is left. Okay. So you might need to I'll dash or something like that. And then... 1, 2, 3, 4... Uh, oh, I guess if I move to here, is that within range of Tattle to do a protect? Um, probably not because Tattle is on the ceiling. Ah, uh, right. Okay. Well, well. Um, okay. So I'll, I'll just move to this square then, and um, he'll throw his hand axe. What's uh, your movement speed, Vinted? Uh, uh, oh no, it's twenty-five. It's not thirty. Uh, yeah. 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 But in any case, he'll throw the hand axe. Um, okay. Oh yeah, and that's 20, still a twenty yeah, foot. So yeah, you're yeah. you're good. Yeah. Um, okay, go for it. Come on, Alex. That's a nat twenty. <laughs> oh, excellent. Oh, yeah. You know, I'm really impressed actually of all these nat twenties and really high attack rolls. You know, their AC is eighteen. Like you, <laughs> this is not oh, wow. this should not be <laughs> that easy a fight, and yet you yeah. are turn them into paste. Uh, and yeah. And roll double this your is damage another dice. Menacing attack as well. <laughs> Do I get to? Double the superiority die as well, or is it just a? Uh, if you're adding a superiority die, you do get to double it. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Cool. It's just like with a paladin smite. Oh wait, I, I roll two dice, or do I just double the result? Oh, you or roll is... double the number of dice. Okay. Right. All right. I'll just roll the dice twice. Um, okay. So that's uh, seven and twelve plus three. Uh, 15 damage. 15 damage. And a DC 13 wisdom save. Doesn't need to. It's dead. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> you pin it to the wall with a hand axe. Very, very, very nice. Um, 
Uh, quickly go and retrieve the hand axe. We'll say that a one and you can very easily move out of the way before this collapses. You once again have one turn's Yeet. worth of things before the last oh, thing come comes on, through. <laughs> right. You're about halfway uh, down now and the walls are rumbling. What would you like to do? Can I roll Can I roll to see if my uh, wedding recharges at least? You can roll that, absolutely. Can you web us to the lift? Oh, no. no. Oh, bad luck. Uh, so, yeah, what, what what are we doing? What are we doing? Grabbing onto the lift again. Okay, yeah. Aegis is pole dancing. <laughs> Stong's still flying and still has fire breath while holding Bob, so Stong's doing just fine. I'm going okay. to fly last. Uh, it's a minute, so you got... Oh, uh, ten minutes, even. So you, ten minutes. Oh, wow. That's it, fine. it will outlast this combat for sure. Um, Can Stong just fly to the bottom? Quite possibly. All oh, right, yeah. I need to roll. Just place weapons down there alone. If you want to. <laughs> I need to roll some initiative. Yeah, because wandering off from the party on some method of going yeah. downstairs has worked out so well this <laughs> mm. Okay. Ooh, spicy. They're spicy. I don't like these noises. Everyone else rolled really well on initiative. So even though they've rolled pretty well on initiative, they're coming in right at the end. Um, so more rumbling again and bursting through the walls to the north. How are there any walls left? Well, there's barely any floor left, right? Oh, oh God. God. Come on. <laughs> Seriously? Uh. <laughs> Oh, sorry, Tassel. Did you want it to be worse? I can do that. No. <laughs> there you go. And bursting through <laughs> next to Tattle, the Kruthic Hive Guard. <laughs> Seriously? Tassel says in spider. <laughs> yeah, no one, no one understands it. You know what's interesting? Kruthics, they do actually have a language. Oh. You just, none of you speak do it. They, do they speak spider? They speak Kruthic. Okay. Specifically their language. Uh, but yes, uh, Aegis, top of the round. you got a load of young Krifix next to you again. Marty's <laughs> fucking bugs. All right. <laughs> okay, kiddies, come to daddy. Uh, we'll, um, we'll attack the one directly to his north with the hand axe. Okay. Uh, and that is a 15. That's not going to hit, does it? That is not going to hit, I'm afraid. Um, and we'll just stand his ground. Okay. Hive guards coming through. It's going to move down to here. Do I get an attack of opportunity? Uh, no, you're 10 feet up. Oh, okay. And How small is the hive guard? While a large creature, it is not uh, up near the ceiling. Otherwise, Tattle would not have any benefit from being on the ceiling either. <laughs> I've got's going to go over here, and I think anyone who's played Deep Rock Galaxy will know what's coming. <laughs> it's going to spray acid in a 15 oh, no. foot cone. <sighs> uh, by the way, I didn't write this stat. This is actually from the Monster Manual. It's just uh, what a coincidence. Um, okay, so I'm going to need a dexterity saving throw, please, from Stonk. Bob, a one in and vintage. How high does that cone spray? <laughs> He's going <sighs> projectile vomiting on you. <clears throat> Don't worry, it can't do this very often. It's 15 feet up. Yeah, it's a 15 foot cone, so it's quite a spray. Uh, there is a saving throw, you said. Yeah, and I'm going to key. I'm going to key up the uh, the dice on here. For, um, you got a nice vomit colored one? We'll have to do that. Uh, Vintage is totally going to use his inspiration on that roll. Uh, stonk as well, I think. 13 for Vintage. 15 is, for Stonk. Why is that doubling up? That's really weird. And oh, it's doing 100, isn't it? Oh, that's why. I don't want 100. So, anyone, uh, anyone beat a 14? Yep. Stong did. Stong did? Okay, Stonk, you're going to take half of this damage. Hang on. Oh. And a one and got... Yes. 
Okay, so Stonk and a one you're going to take half this damage. The dogs are going to take the full damage. Let's roll 4d10. Uh, 11 it, points of damage. A low roll. Uh, <laughs> did you say Bob's just, taking full damage? Uh, did Bob pass in the end? Oh, I, I didn't even roll for Bob. Oh, yet. roll for Bob now. Uh, which way does that round? Is that five or six? It rounds down. So it'll be five to those who pass and 11 to those who fail. Oh, and oh. concentration save. Oh, Bob is oh. dead. Bob takes 11 damage. That's not uh -huh. dead. That's unconscious. Okay. Wait. Uh, plus two. He's unconscious in Stonk's arms. Oh. One is still constrained. No, Excellent. Bob. So Bob's just gone unconscious. Um, Bob yeah. is still a Bob will have to do death saving throws on Bob's turn. Mm -hmm. But he's not completely out. You know, there's, there's still the chance. That's the Hive Guard's go. Uh, so over to Stonk. So you've survived the Hive Guard's breath weapon. Oh, sorry, Stonk. I'll need a concentration saving throw. I'll need... Uh, so that's constitution save, and you need a 10 or higher. That's a constitution save. 10 or higher. Well, let's hope. Ooh. You're no longer flying, I'm afraid. Oh, yeah. Drop to the ground. Uh, I'm going to say you're not prone or anything. You're, you're okay. Uh, oh, I forgot. There should be a new one of these. Um, Pull your jaw onto the big heavy thing that is the hive guard. <laughs> Environment is always on the side of the monsters, Outrage. I'm afraid. Outrageous. <laughs> yeah, Stonk, you're good. Uh, can you take the concentration ring away on... Oh. Talia. Talia put it on. There we go. Uh, thank you. Uh, well, Stonk's carrying Bob, which is now not quite as handy as before, especially because Bob's unconscious. Uh, but Stonk does have the fire breath. Um, you do? Yeah. Um, it's not a ranged attack either, so it you know you can, you can do it against someone right there. Mm-hmm. Just trying to take a feather, it's better to move. Stunk first, that probably doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, I guess Stunk will just uh, fire breath at the half guard. Leave nice. us! <laughs> hey, remember, you're one shove away from pushing the hive guard down a hole, so, you know? <laughs> No, I mean, fair point. not necessarily an easy thing to do, it being a big old <laughs> bastard, but it is possible. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's a dexterity save, right? Uh, yes, it is. Let me roll a dex save for the Hive Lord. Sorry, Hive Guard. Dex save. Okay, that's a seven. It's going to take the full damage. Yeah. <laughs> 46. Um, well, that's a decent roll. And yeah. 13. 13. Very nice. First bit of damage on the Hive Guard. Yeah. Uh, and Stunk with Bob in his arms is going to move mm -hmm. over here. Hmm. Would that be positioning? Probably. Yeah, I think Stunk's going to go over there. Okay. Uh, and is Bob doing anything? Oh no, Bob's, well, Bob's, Bob's, Bob's rolling so. a death save. Yeah, roll me a d20. Uh, it's, it's, not a, it's not a death save, it's a death save, right? Yeah, death save. Okay, I heard a death save. Uh, d20. Well, that's a 14. So that's One good. pass. Yeah, very nice. Uh, over to Tattle. All right, see. Uh, remind me, do I roll before or after my turn? Uh, roll before so your recharge. turn on recharges. Okay. See if I get my web back. Natural one. Unfortunate. I mean, to be fair, it's a, a, a d6, so it's not too low. A oh. chance. Yeah. Well, anyway. Uh, so, Aegis, how do you, how well do you think you could handle this um, onslaught? I can take him tattle. Bangs his shield. 
<laughs> this is, of course, communicated in gesture because Tashel is a spider and cannot speak. <laughs> yeah, yes. Is, just nodding at each other. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like those jumping spiders doing the little um, wrestle with their uh, forceps. Luna is yeah. translating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that makes logical sense. <laughs> I'm not sure Luna speaks spider either. Yeah, but it understands its owner. Come on. True. They've known each other for all of two days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Luna's probably freaking the fuck out, to be honest. <laughs> like. <laughs> yeah. I'm just thinking... Is, should I try... I, I mean, I can only make one attack, so I can only attack one of these. Whereas if I uh, took the hit running I could uh, try and bite the high of guard that might be a good idea you got the health right you're a druid yeah this is basically uh, free hit points Aegis can protect yeah. yeah okay I'm gonna I'm gonna make the run alright free attacks okay. against you at uh, first one at disadvantage because of protect so first oh. one that's a natural four that's not gonna hit so second one is at normal uh, that is a 19 Third one hit. is at normal. That is 16. Uh, yeah, that hits as well. 10 points of damage, but you're free. Yep. And here I am. <laughs> om nom 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 nom. You hear Stonk on the other side say, Rock you like a hurricane. <laughs> uh, technically speaking, Stonk is giving you fl uh, flanking. So you have advantage. Oh, cool. I'll roll uh, again then. I, Just in case we get a natural 20. That kind of intended to. Ah, so close. That is a 23 to hit. That hits. And I need to make a constitution saving throw, don't I? Yes, yes you do. That is an 18. Yeah, that passes sadly. So you'll only take half damage from the poison. Well, I mean, still, still good damage. Okay, so that is uh, seven points of piercing damage, and I'll just run this one twice. Uh, five points of poison damage. Okay, nice damage. Very good. A good bite on what this this the, the hive guard is huge. It's this massive stalking uh, creature with huge thick, like, probably three or four inch thick plates of chitinous armour. Yeah. You managed, to, just managed to find something soft to bite. <laughs> yeah. Just went for the legs. Mm. And, um, uh, yeah, that's all Tassel's got, so, um, okay. Luna's just going to take the, uh, well, take a faint action to give her uh, advantage on the next turn if she needs it. Okay, that sounds good. Over to a one in. I've waited literal months to be able to, to do this. Okay. Just I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah. A one in whips out a net. Okay. I'm even Shout. more excited. It's time to go fish and throws the net at the hive guard. Okay. All right. And I'm using the advantage from Zephyr Strike. Okay. I don't get disadvantage because I have Sharpshooter. Okay. <laughs> and I have a plus eight. This is very, very good. That hits. 21. So you've made, yeah, because nets, for those for those watching at home, nets are really finicky because they're a thrown <laughs> item that has a range of five foot. For, for the non-disadvantage range of five foot. Anything outside of five foot is a disadvantage. But if you make a ranged attack from within five feet of someone, it's a disadvantage as well. It's the weirdest item. And you've finally managed, you've managed to attack with advantage with a net, which is basically impossible. I'm very impressed. It takes a very specific blend of feats. And you've hit against what I will tell you right now is an AC of 20. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, so the Hive Guard is now restrained. I'll give him the brown circle. Yeah. And a bunch of one is fish went with the net, and I'm going to need a strength save. 
Strength save. Okay, they're not like not strong. But let me see what happens. Nice. <laughs> What's the DC? 13. <laughs> 12. I rolled an eight. <laughs> they have plus four. <laughs> Into the hole. Goodbye. <laughs> Are you kidding me? In the immortal words of Robot Wars, the pit, the pit, the pit. Oh the my, pit. oh my god. No, hold, hold. So you can move them that far? 15 feet in a direction of your choice. Fucking incredible. <laughs> <laughs> so at the height it is at, and it is restrained, it's tied up in a net, it gets into the hole, it starts to fall, it's scrambling, but of course it can't find any purchase on the walls. It is falling 250 feet. A one and can you please roll me? Uh, this actually maxes out. Can you roll me 20 D6s, please? Oh, jeez. Oh, because <laughs> that's, that's terminal velocity uh, falling damage. I, I can't do it on the... Albert. Is it not going to let you on the Albert? I'll, I'll try and cue uh, in 20. I'm sure I can, but... 3, 4, 5, um, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, I have 20 12, d6 10. on my dice calculator. 87. 87. Whoo! That is a lot of damage. Very... <laughs> oh, you know what? You know what's really funny, actually? Yeah. So the Krifik Hive Lord has 102 hit points. <laughs> uh-huh. It had taken 25 hit points of damage so far from Tattle and from Stonk. <laughs> so that <laughs> just goes over the 102. <laughs> so you I just killed the Krivik Hive Lord. <laughs> I'm genuinely <laughs> amazed. <laughs> you know, you're calling it a fall of damage, but I don't think that's quite right. It's quite clearly burst damage. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, oh, no, yeah. Oh, I like that thing that happens to tarantulas. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, what I'm going to say happens then, because what is effectively like a localized queen, it is not the queen, but it is like the queen, um, has died. <laughs> <laughs> The others are going to skitter away. Now, Aegis, um, you can take, uh, you can make an attack of opportunity if you want, but they are going to go straight into the rock and, and disappear. Um, I think he's just going to stand there and uh, assume that he'd yeah. done something amazing because it's just all the actions happened behind him and he doesn't realize. <laughs> it's not, it's not been looking. Like, they're just scared of me. Yeah, uh, obviously <laughs> a one in vintage, you can move out of that square. That's no problem. Um, but that's yeah. it. You make it to the bottom of the lift, having survived the largest swarm in this dungeon. <laughs> okay, I've got two things to say. Yep. First thing, it's going to look kind of, it's going to be, look great when uh, the lift finally gets to the bottom and its cor splattered corpse just shows up in the hole. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You notice know, Bonox this year, they're, they're dropping like flies. <laughs> <laughs> hey. uh, so yeah, uh, you can get your net back once um, once the lift comes to the bottom. You can retrieve the net. Well done, very um, well no done. Uh, I, I better see that in a fucking after action a report. Inspiration for that incredible move. Uh, yeah, you know what? Yeah, absolutely, a one in inspiration. <laughs> Excellent move. Uh, <laughs> You deleted the boss. <laughs> you almost one shot the boss. Um, it, fantastic, and you, yeah, you will, you will get to the bottom. <laughs> so you reach the bottom of the shuddering lift, and yeah, uh, one, and you're able to get your uh, net back. And there is the exploded corpse of the Krothic Hive Guard at the bottom. From here. Uh, a door opens up and leads into a long stone corridor with ornate carvings on the side. That corridor um, trifurcates. It <laughs> splits into three. So there's a, a left, a right, and a straight down the middle. Um, to the left is a heavy, ornate set of oaken doors. Um, to the right is a set of sturdy iron doors um, the f 
sort of feel a little warm as you approach them. And then straight down the middle, you can see an open corridor with the glitter of gems on the ground. Um, and then on the other side, another door. This one made of stone. So iron, stone, or metal. What are we feeling? Is iron not a metal anymore? Oak, stone, or metal? Wood, stone, or metal? Um, <laughs> with my uh, dwarven ancestry, would I know any significance of these um, kind of uh, doors? <laughs> um, tell you what, roll me a history check. Now, you don't get the stone cunning on this. Yeah. I, I, I'm not good at history, but I'll roll it anyway. And that's an eight. Okay. Um, with that, I can give you a bit of information. So you know that um, a mine is obviously going to need to process the ores that they dig up, uh, whether that is, um, uh, for example, cutting um, marble into usable blocks or whether it is melting down ores or something like that. But now that you're this far down, there's probably got to be, and fairly near the cargo lift, something that's going to be generating cargo. The metal door is most likely that one. Um, you know, it's a heavy, sturdy door. It's the it, it looks a lot more industrial than the others. Straight ahead, you can see gems on the floor. That's a little unusual. And beyond it, quite an ornate stone door. Every mine has what is known as the foreman, but the word foreman means a different thing in dwarven culture than it means in uh, most other humanoid cultures. A foreman in a mine like this is equivalent to the mayor. Uh, you know, there's no, no one above the foreman uh, in a mine project, and mines eventually become mountain homes, and then those uh, those foremen will become, you know, monarchs uh, instead. So it, it's much closer to that sort of reigning, ruling sort of idea. Maybe that's why there's gems. Um, and uh, the wooden one, well, everyone needs to drink. Okay. Maybe um, it's a meat hole. Well then. Oh. I might have missed something that we discussed whether we want to have a short rest ASAP. I'm not sure this is the best place to be taking a well, break, Stonk. Well, I'm just wondering if we could go a way that might lead to some kind of safe place potentially. I mean, we don't know what's on the other side of any of these doors, but... Uh, you can always we, take a closer uh, look at them. After we have a look. Yeah. You might be able to identify okay. a safe place. So I've got a question. Mm -hmm. As a castle still a giant spider, and will be for the next two hours, mm -hmm. unless she chooses otherwise, and she has blind sense 10 feet, can she just stand next to the door and see if she senses anything on the other side? No, blind sense is blocked by doors. Uh, well, you need just tremor okay. sense, which is what the critics have, uh, which will actually go through rock and stuff like that. Blind okay. sense is a little well, closer to a sort of an innate uh, proprioception sort of well, thing, like something's near you. Oh, uh, um, yeah. Wait, oh, my bad, it's blind sight. Yeah, sorry, that is... Yeah. That, yeah, the same, same thing, though. Um, tremor okay. sense is the one that will find it through the rock and you'll be able to go, oh, there's something on the other side. Okay. Hmm. Uh, can I climb up the walls where the uh, and climb along the ceiling where the gems are and just uh, move quite, quite carefully and quietly and just check to see if there's anything interesting there? Sure. So you're sort of avoiding the gems and getting up on the ceiling. Um, yeah, what you see here is there's, as I said, there's a lot of gems on the ground. Um, let me just get the information up for this room. Um, there are, do oh, I've even got, look, I even wrote box text for this. Look at that. Look at that. So Ooh. dozens of gems lie strewn upon the floor. Uh, and amid the treasure stands a marble statue with its hands clasped in front of it. A placard at the statue's base is saying something in Dwarven. You don't speak Dwarven. Um, on the other side of the room is a heavy stone door. That's the one I mentioned. It has no lock or handle and instead has a simple dark hole, just smaller than your fist when you're a human, uh, when you're a humanoid. 
Um, and there are dwarven runes over that door. Okay. Since the camera's not been invented yet, uh, Tassel returns to the group, turns back into a tiefling, and relays all this to um, Aegis. Okay. It's like I'm up then. Uh, so you, you've turned back into tiefling form? Yeah. Okay. Um, Aegis, you can go and take a look. Absolutely. So I'll tell you what the placard at the statue's base reads that I mentioned. It says, only one treasure may leave this room. Cross with another and find your tomb. Uh, and the dwarven runes over the door read the foreman's office. As you get closer, um, there's one other thing, actually, which I think mainly you as a dwarf with your stone cunning would notice. And that is... All throughout these dwarven mines, there have been holes in the walls because the Kruthix eat stone. They they create tunnels and they go through there. They haven't touched the room you're in. Sorry, this chunk of corridor. They've not touched it. Um, and they've not touched the door at the end either, despite being made of stone. Um, even the rest of the corridor before the trifurcation holes all the way through it. You know that if, if you were to rest there, the Krufix would come immediately because they can sense you through the stone. But this little chunk, there's no holes. Oh, do you, mm. um, do you sense anything magical around here? Can I, um, cast to take magic as a, um, as ritual? a ritual? Absolutely. I will move the horde somewhere. So you take 10 minutes to cast detect magic. Order now. There. Excellent. Okay. <clears throat> and now let's maybe gather up some of these gems. We shouldn't let them go to waste, right? So, what's the order of what's uh, happening it, it, here? Uh, detect magic. Uh, is this while you, while you're casting detect magic? Aegis, are you starting to hoover up gems? Is anyone else doing anything? Aegis, what's that thing about? Only one treasure may leave this room. This isn't a room, this is a corridor. No? Hmm. I just wanted to know what logical. the order of, of things happening is. Is anyone anyone else doing anything? Um, um, I went in with help, Aegis. Okay, so um, Tattle obviously issues a warning there. Aegis, are you ignoring it? Um, I No, actually, I, I think Aegis would be a bit more cautious um, having uh, everything that's gone on. When he's warned, he'll be like, Okay, yes, no, Frida would Frida would say the same. Yeah, Tassel Fair is enough. very wise. So, Tattle, you spend 10 minutes during which uh, Aegis stares deeply and longingly into the gems. And, uh, yeah, um, Detect Magic goes off and bing! Oh, all of those gems are magical. <laughs> they are all magical. Uh, so is the statue and so is the door at the end. I am. What school do I get? What school do you get? Uh, shit. Not a school, Nick. <laughs> uh, you don't get a school. There is no spell on these. There is no school. There you go. They're just magical. Mm-hmm. There is not Aegis. a specific spell on these. It is just magic. Mm -hmm. uh, these gems are magic, but it does not seem to correspond to any form of uh, or any uh, school of magic. It's um, disconcerting. You will see abjuration on the door at the end, though. I will add that. Which is, hey, of course, you shit. know, the guarding, warding, yeah. shielding sort of thing. Yeah. So I suppose um, during this time that uh, Aegis has not been collecting magical gems, um, he would have uh, investigated the hole at the end, kind of compared his ring and his fist to it and been like, D does my hand go in there? Hmm. You can try that. Um, I mean, uh, can I like roll investigation or something like that to uh, to make that? Yeah, kind of roll, me, roll me investigation. Yeah, I shouldn't have said that. Uh, I've got rubbish investigation. Oh, that's a seventeen though. Seventeen is good. Let me get you some information. Okay. Okay, so with investigation, you're pretty sure a gem has got to go into the hole in the door. A gem? Yeah. Okay. It's not my fist and it's not the ring. Um, the statue, by the way, one... is... Um, 
not of a dwarf. Oh, what's it? Oh. Roll me a religion oh. check. Does anybody know anything about religion here? Um, I know really. Petricor. That's about it. Yeah. I mean, I get plus two from intelligence, but it's not one of my proficiencies, so... Yeah, I mean, the reason I'm asking is I'm minus two on intelligence, so... Oh, Uncle, so it just says plus two. Oh, and it has plus one. Yeah, I guess uh, either Stonk or I could roll with advantage from being aided. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to do the honours, Summer? Um... I think Stong's still preoccupied with Bob being unconscious, so... Hmm, okay. Yep, in that case, uh, I guess I'll roll then. Okay. Is anyone assisting? Uh, do we need to have proficiency, or can we just... You need to have a reasonable way in which you can assist. It doesn't have to be proficiency, but you've got to be, like, reasonably able to help. I mean, I want to know is Petricor as well, so... Okay, yeah, I'll allow got, that. Yeah, we've, yeah. yeah. No, we've that, got that, the same dirty. Tracks. We've got yeah. We've got stuff in common. Sure. We can communicate. Yeah. Uh, dirty twenty. Well, it's not petrical. <laughs> um, is it Fontaine? It's not Fontaine either. Um, insomnia. Okay. <laughs> it's not insomnia either. All right. It's a humanoid, right? Uh, this one is humanoid, yes. Uh, the face uh, is missing, and in its place is this sort of concave shape uh, that is labyrinthine in nature. It's like someone's carved a hedge maze into the face. Pretorius. I mean, no, not Pretorius. Um, Preteritus. Very close, though, yes. Preteritus, yeah. Yeah. God of knowledge. Okay. <laughs> Well, if only we had a scholar with us. <laughs> um, I will say, my... as this is an official puzzle, I will tell you, and this is part of the rules for how puzzles work, you can make an arcana check to determine something. You can make a religion check to determine something else. Oh, no, actually, you've just worked that one out. Um, oh, one other thing you get, actually, with your 20. Uh, you have a strong feeling that the order of the gems in the room is important. There you go. You, you've unlocked I, one of the clues. <laughs> I, am, I have a strong feeling that the order of one of the gems in the room might be important. Are all the gems the same size? They're not even the same kind of gem. Okay, can I use nature to identify the different gems about? You don't have to roll. You just have to say, I want to identify the gems to unlock this step of the, <laughs> of the thing. Uh, you have, and I will give you amounts and numbers. If someone has a pen and paper, you really will be wanting to write this down. Um, if you've all got pen and papers, I recommend that. But, you know. I'll stick it in the Discord. There are 14 amethysts. There are five garnets. There are 16 onyxes. There are 12 rubies. There's one quartz. There's 18 jades. There are eight citrines. There are nine ambers, 12 rubies, and 13 sapphires. You said rubies, say twice. rubies twice. I didn't mean Jinx. to say that twice. I'm, I'm reading this out of order. Um, Sorry, what was the very last one before um, other than 13 Ruby? sapphires. Okay. So there are... Actually, yeah, read that back to me because it is critical that you have this right. Okay. <laughs> 14 amethyst, yep. 5 garnet, uh -huh. 16 onyx, 12 mm -hmm. ruby, mm -hmm. 1 quartz, 18 jade, 8 citrine, 9 amber, and 13 sapphire. Good, you got them all. All right, good luck. Okay. Right. Is there something um, unusual about the statue at all? Apart from, well, obviously we know that statue is. Can I, is there any sort of clue in the statue itself? Or It's unusual that yeah. uh, Proteritus, in this case, is depicted with um, honk and gert tits. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Usually, Proteritus is not depicted as having any kind of body. So that's unusual. All right. Mm -hmm. 
so I roll nature to know if there's any way gems could relate to a, bo- a humanoid body. Yeah, roll nature. Okay. Uh, is anyone else proficient with nature? No. Uh, yes. Hey, Ranger, help me out here. Ranger helps you out here. Yay. <laughs> I rolled two 18s for a total of 22. Doesn't appear to be related. Okay. That's a waste of an 18. So, I mean, none of these gems have the same number as any of the others. So it could be a case of putting them in the order of the number of them there are. Um, Mm. This feels too obvious. And it would ignore the um, properties of the gems themselves. One, five, eight, nine... 12, 14, no, 12, 13, 14, 16, 18. Um, the colors. We've got Amethyst is pink, right? Garnet is red. Onyx is. What color's Onyx? Onyx is black, I believe. Yep. And Ruby's red. Quartz. I don't know what quartz is. Quartz is. Sort of white colors, right? Yeah. Okay. Jade's green, citrine's orange. Yep. Amber is well, amber, and sapphire is like a bluey color. So, yeah. Hmm. It's not like it's a rainbow or anything. Um, mm. Nine different types of gems. How are the numbers related? Uh, the numbers are under twenty-four, so letters could come into it. Right. Let's see what those letters would be. I will say because what you've sort of worked together to get to is another one of your clues um, that the nu- the characters sense that the number of each type of gem is not arbitrary. Hmm. So, yeah, you're right, basically. <laughs> <laughs> now then. Okay. Uh, alphabet. Uh, okay. 14th okay. of the alphabet is O. 5th is E. 16th is Q. No, is that right? I don't know my alphabet. Okay, I'm just going to Google letters of the alphabet and up. Number <laughs> letters of the alphabet. Numbers to letters online. Here we are. Numbers to letter online tools. Just give me the numbers. So 14. 14. Just keep going. Oh, uh, 14, 5, 16, 12, 1, 18, 8, 9, 13. Okay, so that's 14, 5, 16, 12, 1, 18, 9, 13. No, it was 8 before the 9. 8 before the 9. Neplahim. Oh, yeah, kind of biblical angel, that is. (laughs) (laughs) It's like... It's like the wish version of the ne- Nephrim. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like um, you pray pray to the um god of um discount massive discounts and <laughs> that's what they send to help you. <laughs> what are we thinking at the moment? Uh wait, let's see what this is an anagram of. Yeah, I was just thinking that. Wait, plain is it planar or planar? Planar. Okay, that's a copy it then. Wait, yeah. I can just Google an anagram ser- searcher. Yeah, I was just doing that. That's a bit cheaty now. Now, I don't mind you looking up what letters and what numbers, but come oh, on now. <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> fine. I'll use right. the power of my brain, Nick. There is a limit. <laughs> um, what is mine? Uh, M-I-N-E. Oh, yeah, mine's a good shout. And then that leaves P L A R H. Um, mine laugh. Uh, <laughs> mine, mine fall. It's clearly Minecraft. What was it? P L A R H. Yeah. Ralph. <laughs> mine Ralph. Mine Ralph. Ralph. Yeah, that's Ralph it. Ralph mine. Ralph mine. <laughs> Oh, well done, it's got to be the, the Dwarven <laughs> King You're in Ralph. danger. <laughs> Chuckles, you're in danger. Um, Pickle winner. 
Um. <laughs> uh. Uh. Has anyone got a better intelligence score than 14? Nope. Intelligence? Nope. Uh, nope. Okay, as apparently the smartest one present, can Tassel try and work this out? You can try. Hey, is this just going to be a straight intelligence check? Or... Uh... Yeah. Uh, investigation. Okay, investigation. Still a straight invest... Well, nothing Tassel does is straight, but you know what I mean. <laughs> hey, that's a cocked dice. Uh, that's a 16. 16. You're pretty sure you're on the right track about each gem's amount being a letter. Hey, oh wait, yeah, the gems themselves must make, must... Ooh. Okay, so if... Okay, so the word, we're looking for a word and that must be the um, order of the gems. Yeah, I think, uh, I think Talia's figured it out. Um, mineral pH. And minerals have pHs? They do. Everything, Everything has, has a pH. pH. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Uh, don't, don't tell me we've got to figure out what the pH of all these minerals is and then put them in order. I'm not going to tell you that, no. <laughs> <laughs> Suspect that okay. could be exactly that. <laughs> this is a medieval fantasy world. They don't well, they even know what pH is. I can tell you this, it's not mineral pH, so that's a wonderful guess. Um, Damn it. But that is not <laughs> it, I'm afraid. I was going to say, that's too much brain work for Nick. Wait, mineral HP. It's HP source! Hey. <laughs> I sure wish that's for Bob right now. Okay. Oh, yeah. Um, do I have a... Ooh. Yep. Um, I have a... He I hand stonker healing potion to give, uh, to, give to Bob. Thank you. Well, Stone goes, Oh, thank you, Chattel. And he gives it to Bob. Bob wakes up slowly and sees you looking down on him, Stonk, and gives you sort of a faint lick on the face and then gradually gets back up mm -hmm. and then shakes and then jumps up at you. Bob! <laughs> 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 and is extremely happy and is running in circles around your legs. I'm the so man. glad you're okay, buddy. <laughs> How much HP okay. does he For a potion of healing, it's 2d4 plus 4. No, 2d4 plus 2. Okay. Oh, this is this is hard. Mmm. Okay. Only 4. No. Oh. Okay. Unfortunate, but still, I mean, uh, At least conscious, yeah. Yeah, that's most important. Any ideas? Yeah. What, what are we thinking at the moment? What's what's the current sort of plan of attack? Um, they... Okay, so it must be um, an acronym. Okay. Mine, mine feels it like it feels like it has to have mine in it because that's just on theme. Are you mm. sure that's not a coincidence and you're ruining your chances by assuming mine is in it? We're not sure of anything, Nick. I'm just... Uh, that's all I'm saying. Do you think there might be any other clues that you've ignored? Okay. Um, uh, uh, what we, was, uh, what was I... the thing on the statue? What was the words on the statue again? Let me get you that. Only one treasure may leave this room. Cross with another and find your tomb. Tomb? No, that, that, that's not. Yeah. Is there any um, punctuation around that as well? Uh, there's a full stop after room, and a full stop after tomb. <laughs> Capitalizations. The word only and the word cross are capitalized. <laughs> oh, it's grammatically correct. It is grammatically correct. Yeah. Yeah. A horror. <laughs> Hmm. Maybe it's uh, something. Okay, so we've got the god of labyrinths. Okay, Pteritus is the god of knowledge and ignorance. Uh, would I know? 
would Tassel know any significance of um the um of Proteritus being portrayed in humanoid form? It's unusual. It's very unusual. Okay. You know what? I'm actually I'm going to wreck on that because I've just realised there's a better fit than Proteritus. Oh. It's going to be the quarrelling lovers. Mm. Well, they're always in humanoid form. They are. But it just, it makes m- way more sense. And the one thing, the one thing you realize, of course, is that Quarrying Lovers are about chaos and order. The gems are scattered on the ground chaotically. But you're pretty sure the order of the gems is important. I've got it, Nick. It's Hill Imp right now, RM. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird that that almost, no, that actually fits. Amazing. Yeah. It it's does, not it. <laughs> now we just need to find him to heal him. Them. Sorry, them. Damn it. Um. <laughs> we haven't done an, an Arcana check yet. Indeed. Um, yeah. Someone, someone feel free to do Arcana. Okay. Uh, does anyone have a better Arcana than... Two. Song has nope. Been. Eight. Do it. Can I assist with my detect magic being up? Yes. Okay, Song's gonna do an arcana check. That's with advantage. That's right. Well, it was the same roll regardless. 16. 16? Uh, yep. Um, well, plus two. Plus two, okay. You determine, Stonk, there are spirits imprisoned in the gemstones scattered on the floor. Uh-huh. Guys, there are spirits in these darn gems. I'm getting a little bit freaked out over here. Huh. Unusual. There are ghosts in these shells. <laughs> <laughs> I was making a Scooby-Doo reference and then you make an anime reference. <laughs> You'll get me banned. <laughs> uh, can I... Okay, so we know there are uh, spirits in these gems. Can I take a closer look at the spirit in one of the gems just to see if I can work out what's in there? It's not visible. Um... Stonk okay. got a sort of sense of it. Spirits in the gems. Hmm. Wait, there is are these... a haunting and angry and melancholic vibe about them. Okay, so they're not the sort that summon elemental spirits. They're the actual ghost sort of spirit. Yeah, actual ghost sort of spirits, yeah. One anagram would be in her lamp. Ooh. You don't see a lamp, I'm afraid. Hmm. Lame fern. <laughs> Enemy fern. <laughs> okay, so the quarreling lovers are relevant. So maybe it's something to do with chaos, or chaos and order. Yes, I have said that. Yes. <laughs> but like, maybe the uh, phrase or word we're looking for is... Ah, I see. Hmm. I mean, metatextually we know that... Nick said it was Proteus at first, beside but decided the quarrying lovers. So it's something to do with conflict. Oh, I, I sorry, yes, and also the information about it being about chaos and order is something you would have gotten from the religion check that uh, okay you managed earlier. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Okay, so the stones were completely randomly scattered. There wasn't any significance to their positioning before we started counting them. They were randomly right? scattered, that's correct. There was no significance to the position of them. Mm-hmm. However, you did get the insight that the number of each gem is not arbitrary. And it's definitely something about these letters, right? Um Yes, I I yeah. yeah I've confirmed that one. You're, you're on the yeah, right I'm track. Just speak, speaking the letters. out loud here. Um, uh, the number of each gem is not arbitrary. Okay, are we just assuming these letters correspond to the Dwarven alphabet or something? Because otherwise, it makes no sense that they'd suddenly put the puzzle in common at when the instructions were in Dwarf. <laughs> we'll say it just happens to correspond, sure. 
Um, <laughs> oh, yes. Stonk, give me... No, stonk or a one in... Stonk, give me an insight check, please. Yeah, okay, Stonk is going to try to be insightful for a change, not as forte. <laughs> um, uh, no, I meant to only roll one. And that oh, your lowest roll there is actually high enough. Um, <laughs> oh. Oh. Uh, Stonk, you you realise that you've worked out they've worked out the significance of the number. They've not worked out the significance of the gem. It could have been a number of anything on the ground. Why is it gems? Or, mm, or, or what does the gem have to do with it? There's some significance to these kinds of gems. Maybe their colour. Hmm. Why would it be gems aside from the dwarven greed? They duck too deep. <laughs> <laughs> but certainly, you get the vibe that they're on the right track there with the numbers corresponding to a letter, but that there's this additional data point of the gem type itself that has not been considered yet. Angus, what do you know about these gems? Um, I, could I roll a stone cunning on the gems? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. That gives me a plus two. And that's an 11. An 11. Stone cunning does not give you a plus two. I, right? I have a minus two to history normally. But you have double proficiency on... Yeah, so double proficiency would give me um, plus four to that minus two. <laughs> wow, okay. Yeah, no, fair enough then. Um, with that, I mean, you know, you know, these gems are all you know, worth a fair bit, usually. Um, each of these are, are stones you can trade for good money. It's weird to see them just scattered on the ground. Why has no one else touched them? Uh, why have they not been robbed? Th those are the, sort of the ideas coming to your head there. Uh, so clearly there's something bad that happens if you take the wrong one. Um, and also... I mean, yeah, you... You know that some of them have the same colour, so it's probably not the colour, um, unless duplicates matter, which is possible. But it might be something else. Are they different shapes? They are. Some of them are. Some of them are. Some of them are different cuts, but most of them are the same. Hmm. Wait, did you say colour doesn't matter? Probably not, because there's duplicate colors on there there is for example ruby um which is red and garnet garnet there we go on the list okay wait maybe it's alphabetical uh <clears throat> so amethyst only if it was just alphabetical it would just be the numbers in order right no uh alphabetical of the um actual words oh, okay as well as the numbers so amethyst is 14 and what comes after oh wait no amber wait no amber would be Amber's before amethyst so that's nine then 14 Ooh. so that's i n a no uh citrine eight i n h H in H uh, C D Garnet five E yeah. H I J Jade eighteen Yeah Yeah this doesn't spell anything does it? Yeah no it does In heck B L M something It's an R isn't it? Okay. Only one H, sorry. In her... In her palm. Do you say that out loud, Stonk? In her palm. Ah, oh. uh, right. Stonk, do you say that out loud? Uh, I guess Stonk would say that out loud if he suddenly realized that. The quarreling lovers, one of whom is always depicted as uh, feminine, her hand opens. And in her hand is a diamond. 
Oh, hey, I guess it was in her palm all along. I can't believe how close I got. I said in her I lamp. Was, I was <laughs> screaming internally when you got in her lamp because <laughs> you were so close. <laughs> oh, God. Of course it's lamp. Where's the in lamp? In her palm. Well, clearly the statue has no hands. Okay. <laughs> well, I guess we found the one treasure <clears throat> that can leave, I assume. There's a okay, diamond, I guess yeah? we um, try that in the hole then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, Aegis, I will tell you one thing. You're pretty confident this diamond is going to open that door. But you as a dwarf would also know its value. I'm going to tell you this right now. You have a choice. The the real Skinner box moment of the day, okay? <laughs> because you know that room is effectively the king's office, right? Or the queen, you don't know. But you also know that diamond you're holding is worth 5,000 gold pieces. I didn't come down here to see what gems were lying around. Yeah. This is part of my ancestry. <laughs> I'm just saying, those those are your choices. You've got 5,000 gold pieces or what's behind door number two? <laughs> uh, well, if only this was the Monty Hall problem. I mean, this is the part where you reveal a goat somewhere. <laughs> Inside oh, I mean, is a brand new card. I mean, uh, in the last battle, the real goat was a wooden. <laughs> so, um, Aegis, you've you, you know uh, you you've got the you've got the gem. What are you doing? Um, I mean, he'll he'll look at the others and be like, "We're we're opening the, that door, right? Are we sure we want to move on from here right now? Already, it it kind of seems safe in here." It's Maybe not safe in there. Breath. Can't stay um, here forever. No. So, so to understand, you're at the end of a corridor. The ending of the corridor you're in, the bugs have never entered. But it's an open corridor, and the other side of the corridor, they definitely have. Yeah. But Friend. that door has in never been passed, so that might be a safe resting area. In Imp's memory, mm. we should try and open a door safely. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we don't know what's on the other side, so everyone brace. And he just puts the gem into the door. Okay, and the door shudders open. This grinding of stone on stone, and inside you find an opulent room that has remained entirely untouched since the mine's abandonment. It appears as if even the swarms cannot break through the enchanted stone around you. A granite desk and an imposing carved marble throne dominate the room, stuffed with papers covered in dwarven runes. Flanking the desk are two oaken banded iron chests with formidable looking iron locks. And behind the throne is an iron armor stand bearing a frankly beautiful piece of splint armor. Now, we're running a little bit low on time, so instead of identifying it, I'm going to tell you what it is right now. That is Mithril Splint Armor. Ooh. Mm. That's almost as nice as what Hayes now has. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is why we weren't supposed to worry about it. Um, inside, as you get closer, you can see that the desk is uh, carved from granite. It's ornate. It's extremely heavy looking. There are four drawers made of rosewood um, in the side by the door. Um... And yeah, there's these two chests that are locked with these heavy iron locks. Can I attempt to pick... Wait, can I check the um, chests for traps? Sure. Make me a uh, wisdom perception check, please. Yep. I was going to say thieves or proficiency, but I'll take the wisdom perception check. Thank you very much. I'm going to use my inspiration on that. Okay. And this trace is going in dice jail. <laughs> mm -hmm. 25. 25. Well done. Because the DC was 20. It is indeed trapped. Hey, can I try and disarm the trap? You may. You may make me a dex dexterity check using thieves tools to disable it. So what there is, is you can see inside as you're, as you're looking into the lock, there's this small, tiny poisoned needle hidden in it that you reckon if you would try and pick the lock it would jut out and poison you classic 
Imp would love to see this. Uh, that's a natural 20 for a 25. Very Oof. good. You needed a 20 again. Uh, you have disabled the trap. And I'm going to say you can you can roll that through to the lock picking as well. I, I think it's silly to then just have another another check to try and get it open, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, this chest contains 15 100 GP gemstones. Ooh. Nice. Uh, is there a key anywhere, by the way? Not in there. Mm. It would be... Uh, Knowing what the trap that was on this one, it might be foolhardy to try and pick the other one. As you spent 10 minutes uh, lock picking and another easily like two and a half hours uh, on the puzzle, I'm going to move the board around a few times. Okay. You can you can spend time to try and break that open or you can look for a key. Someone um, else can be looking, you know, at some other things as well. What's Stonk up to at the moment? Uh, good question. Okay. I want it. I think I want it. Uh, investigating generally around the room. Investigating generally. Okay. So as you're looking around, it's, yeah. it's really pretty. Uh, there are like pennants on the walls with the mines uh, sort of um, sigil. And, uh, you know, they're, fa they're faded a bit. They're a, they're a little Fred Bear, but they, they, look, they still look pretty good. You're looking around and again, this wall has none of those holes that mean that the Krufik have actually managed to break through here and you're pretty sure it's because this entire room is enchanted to prevent people digging their way through. Um, so you think this is probably a safe place to have a short rest? Or even a hmm. long one? Hmm. Uh, what about Aegis? What are you doing? Um, Aegis would obviously have been drawn to the... the fancy suit of armor to start with but having um had tattle tell them oh this chest is trapped he wouldn't have gone poking around um okay. maybe would have looked around the the big stone desk that you described and uh, sure check that out so there's all sorts of yellowing parchment all over the desk and it's all written in dwarven and a lot of it is very uninteresting. You know, it's um, it's accounts and it's like, you know, sold a shipment of iron to so-and-so, sold a shipment of, you know, um, of gems to so-and-so, uh, you know, someone's asked for more coke, uh, that sort of thing. Um, it's a cocaine mine. <laughs> roll me investigation. <laughs> all right. That is a seven. A seven. Uh, so yeah, it's all really boring. And <laughs> it's it's so old and it doesn't really apply to anything in the modern day. So nah, fuck um, it. Stonk, you're, um, you're, you're good with words and stuff. Does anything in this pile here look interesting if I, uh, if I translate for you? I can have a look. Stonk has a look. Okay. Roll me investigation. Can I be giving an, ass an assist on this? No, you're making it possible at all. <laughs> by translating. Um, can I give an assist? Yeah. I, I also agree. Yeah, sure. So, stonk with advantage. Okay. Um, so that's a 13. 13. Okay, with a 13, you can see see there's mention here of another dwarven outpost that was being founded and that they've been sending a lot of materials to. I wonder what happened to that one. Hmm. Mm. So you get the precise location and coordinates. And it is down here on the map. Uh, if I move it so my face is not in the way. Um, so it's Far, far to the south, um, at the corner here of the hills. Been there. You've been there, yes, but again, eight oh, square miles. That exact one, actually. <laughs> we've, Plus, we've been all around that hex. It's it's hard it's hard to find something in eight square miles, which is roughly mm -hmm. the size of Manchester. Yeah. So yeah, um, there's there's one in there. United or FC? Hmm. United or FC? <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> um. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Um, Do we find a key as we're like looking around these uh, these papers on the desk or give anything? Give me a perception check. 
Can I assist? I mean, there's no, all three of us. No, this would be while you're looking at the at the chests. Okay, that's fair. All, all, all three of us are looking at the uh, at the table, so maybe all three of us could roll perception here. All right, you can all roll perception. Hey, I got a fourteen. Fourteen. <laughs> wow, you lot of shit at this. I'm just here. Comes the ranger. Come on, deceiving. Come on, how bad dice roll and there we go. Ah no, that's what you need. Nice. Okay. <laughs> so you're looking you're you're all looking through uh you're looking for all the papers on the desk and then you check the drawers as well. Um a one in the drawer you look in is it's it's barely perceptibly shorter than the other drawers. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. It's a dwarf drawer. <laughs> <laughs> but why is it slightly shorter? I don't know, GM. Why is it slightly shorter? You tell me. Presumably you tell me. What, what what are you doing with this information? Presumably, there's a fake boss or something, isn't there? It's short. Yeah. Which which way shorter? Is in like it doesn't come out. Shallower. Shallower, as shorter as in, yeah, shallower. As in, uh, you you pull out and it's yeah, it's it's shallower <laughs> by oh, probably a, about an inch. I knock on it, see if it's hollow. It is. Me. Um, is there any kind of way to get a purchase on it to lift it? Uh, it, it will not come all the way out. Um, you might need to break it with something. Aegis, you, you're up. You have Okay, so Aegis is proficient in uh, Mason's tools. Um. <clears throat> oh yeah, that works. Yeah, he, he's only got a maul, which isn't really a mason's, well, mason's tool. tools. Include? Do you have mason's tools? I don't have mason's tools on ah, me. Ah, well, but he's proficient in them. If anyone else has like a small hammer, a light hammer, am I? Uh, like am I still? Uh, busy You're still with going. The, uh, That's chest? a ten-minute job. Okay. That chest. Okay. Yeah. Let me check my inventory. You're like, I'd be a there in a sec, but think? I'm very worried about poisoning myself right now. You know. <laughs> A light hammer, you say? I have one of those. Light hammer? Yeah. Let's, uh, let's have a shot with that then. Okay. Well, you don't need a roll. You whack it, it breaks, and inside you find an iron key. Okay. Uh, and that is That's roughly the 10 minutes. So at that point, uh, Tattle opens her chest and you see inside all these gems. Um, uh, just around about the time Aegis produces this key, uh, and you can open the other chest if you would like. It's okay, Tassel, we got the key. Oh. <laughs> oh, just to be clear, that key would not have worked on Tao's chest. Oh, okay. Two different keys, who'd have thought? Huh. Well, okay. We'll no idea where the other one is, though. <laughs> um, wait, Tassel, I mean, do you want to check this chest to see if it's trapped, and then we'll use the key? Good idea. I look at the chest to see if it's trapped. Roll me uh, the same check as before, but with advantage, because you now know what you're looking for. Okay. Uh, 17. 17. Doesn't appear to be trapped, this one. Okay, stand back, yeah. everyone. I'll, um, I'll handle this one. Uh, wait. Does. Wait. Oh. I uh, hand um, Aegis like a pair of pliers or something from my thief's tools so he can um, turn the key from a distance. Good idea. I mean, Aegis, one thing you're probably aware of is that dwarves are pretty resistant to poison, so if it is a poison trap, it's pro that's probably why it's a poison trap, is because if a dwarf gets hit by accident, it doesn't matter that much. That's why he told everyone to stand back, so uh, yep, yeah, he will, he will insert and turn the key. Okay. The chest opens. Uh, as the chest opens, Tattle, you notice the glint of the poison uh, needle in it but it looks like that's just rigged for really to catch people picking the lock um, if you're using the key it seems to work fine mm, okay um, it was keyed to the wards yeah uh, and inside you find 150 platinum pieces Ooh. nice <laughs> okay um, Tattle do you, do you think you could have a look at that suit of armour over there and see if that's trapped as well Absolutely, Dad. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to call you that. <laughs> it's okay, it happens all the time. 
<laughs> Tassel's worst nightmare now. <laughs> Tassel looks intently at the armor. Can I have advantage for that? <laughs> no, but you can have inspiration, which is basically the same thing. High focuses. <laughs> Castle wants nothing more than to look at this armor and hope everyone else is looking at it too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Make me proud, Tattle. Um, <laughs> is it <there> perception? <laughs> yes, this will be perception. <laughs> okay, I'm going to burn that inspiration again because that was a two. Okay, that's slightly better. Uh, 18. 18, you're not sure. Uh, in fact, let me, let me, I'm going to flip a coin. Heads, it's trapped. Tails, it's not. Oh, helps if I actually flip the coin. There we go. Uh, it's trapped. There appears to be a trap, but I'm not quite sure what. Well, assuming this is meant for a dwarf again, it's probably poison related. So if everyone stands back, I can... Wait, 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 <laughs> wait. I would like to cast a tech poison as a ritual, please. Okay, hang on a sec. I'll move the uh, the horde again. Can the rest of us have a um, a short rest whilst uh, Tattle's doing all these rituals? <laughs> if you want me to move the horde ten times, I can. No, no, it's fine. Um, okay, so you, you cast Detect Poison as a ritual. What? How does Detect Poison work? What's the ruling? I think this is the first time this has ever been cast in a game I've ever... <laughs> yeah, it is very niche, but I just had all the Detect ones prepared, so... Okay, that's neat, yeah. actually. That Yeah, that, that really does... That's really... That's quite wild. Yeah so, yeah, so for the duration, you can sense the presence and location of poisons poisonous creatures and diseases that's interesting because it would tell you if there was some poison in there no matter what that's great no i like that yep. that's really that's a that's that's awesome uh nope you must have just had a false alarm earlier um sorry i speak i think i was being a bit dramatic earlier i'm not detecting any poison okay well um maybe the rest of you have a look around elsewhere whilst i'll uh just hop into this uh neat little uh set up. Aegis, you reckon she was probably just making up a trap to you know, <laughs> hide the, just, just hide the fact that she called your dad. <laughs> Wait, has the armor look cursed? It looks really nice. It looks like really nice high quality uh, mithril scale mail. That's what it looks like. To be honest, how much Not more scale, cursed sorry, could I have splinter. gotten? Hmm. I've been a werewolf. I'm damned to hell. I don't think there's that many curses that could uh, go that wrong for me from here. If, as I recall, when the ranger was on that ring, it had become cursed because it had degenerated over the years. If this armor is in any way enchanted, something similar could have happened. And it didn't show up when you had your detect magic on, right? This is true. Oh, yeah. Is, is that true, Nick? That is true. It's not <laughs> magical. Technically, the DMG states Mithril is magical, but I call that bullshit. Hmm. Like, it's magical in the same way um, having a really nice crowbar made of titanium is magical. Yeah, it's just a better material. That's all it is. I, I think it's rubbish that they're magic. Um. So, yeah, the detect magic would not have pinged for this. Yeah, so anyway, uh, Aegis is going to climb in. Okay, you put him on. When you put on the armor, you immediately feel this sense of stylishness. It's good. It suits you well. This was made for dwarves, and you are a dwarf. But this is, you know, this is... This is a king or a queen's armor, you know? This is not your everyday materials. It feels really comfortable. It feels light. It's padded nicely. You get the feeling you could probably sneak and move around in this with no problems. Excellent. Um, as Aegis is putting on the armor, he's like looking at it and he's like turning his hands and looking at the, uh, the, the arm bits and stuff. And he, he sees the ring on his finger again. He's like, Oh, wait a minute. 
Aren't we supposed to use this to open something? Mm hmm. Anybody seen a ring shaped hole anywhere? Not in here. Dun dun dun. Um, I forget what else you said was in the room, Nick. We've, we've uh, looked at the desk. We've looked you've the armor looked at the, the desk. Chest. There's a big old throne. Um, there's the armor and there's the two chests. Get out the throne, everybody, whilst I'm getting um, changed. Yep. Yep. It's a real nice chair. <laughs> it's fucking great. I mean, as, ch as chairs go, this is this is pretty. This is pretty marvelous. Uh, immediately jumps into it. Can I look around the throne to see if there's like um, a built-in fridge or something? <laughs> there is not a built-in <laughs> fridge, no. <laughs> but that is basically everything. Um, I just want to look up something. How long does it take to put on heavy armor? Isn't it like 10 minutes? Yeah. Weird. It's almost like that's exactly a dungeon turn. Yeah, it is. 10 minutes. <laughs> one dungeon turn. All right. So what we'll do, one last thing before we end, because we'll, we'll end here. This is a, a good stopping point because this is probably somewhere you can have a rest. Um, is I will move the... The, the horde. Okay, cool. Um, obviously, they're not going to attack here because, you know, they can't break through the enchanted stone or so you believe. Um, but we will stop there. What a hell of a session. Um, <laughs> I think play of the game goes to Talia. <laughs> you also, you all did very well on that puzzle.